few moments, we will be recognizing our seniors. After that, we will have starting lineups. National Anthem, the first pitch of the game. Special item in our concession stand tonight, pulled pork. You can get a pulled pork sandwich, cooked pulled pork on top of a burger, on top of nachos or Frito pies. Whatever seems to work best for you, enjoy some pulled pork while it lasts. Well, for those who are already tuned in or watching the recording in a few, uh, whenever after the game, it's senior night here at the Lamar Viking Diamond, and you are going to be able to see our seniors get recognized. Okay, are we ready for senior recognition? Okay. Our first senior to be recognized tonight is Jalen Humbles. Jalen wears number one. He is escorted by his parents, Shelby and Stacy Humbles, and his sister, Calissa. Jalen started playing baseball when he was four years old. His varsity position has been shortstop. His favorite game day accessory is batting gloves. His parents' favorite baseball memory, when Jalen was six or seven, he was always distracted on the field, so if he goofed around, we took away his Skylander toys as a consequence. Whenever games got intense and he got distracted, Mom would yell, Skylanders, from the dugout, and that would get him down and ready to play. After a good game, we'd buy him a new Skylander. His best baseball memory from, from Lamar, getting a hit in my first ever, ever varsity at bat as a freshman. Jalen's words of wisdom to future Vikings and seniors, just be you. After high school, he plans to attend Seminole State College and continue his baseball career. career. Ladies and gentlemen, Jalen Humbles. Our next senior is Cade Shryock. Cade wears number four. He is escorted by his parents, John and Susan Shryock, and his brother, Ben, is there with him also. His varsity position has been second base. His favorite game day accessory is wrist tape. His parents' favorite memory of his son playing baseball, playing on the same field as his brother for the first time at Lamar. His proudest accomplishment or best memory from Lamar baseball getting to play with my close friends. His words of wisdom, always play hard. His future plans, baseball or the military. Ladies and gentlemen, Cade Shryock. Our next senior is number five, Cooper Schutte. Cooper is escorted by his parents, Mindy and Kevin. He started playing baseball at four years of age. His varsity position has been outfield. His favorite game day accessory is the arm sleeve. His parents' favorite memory is when Cooper was playing in a tournament in Cooperstown, New York. On the very first pitch of the tournament, Cooper hit a home run over the center field wall. Then Cooper hit the second pitch of his next at back over the center field wall. This day was made even more special because it was Father's Day. His favorite and most proud moment receiving a baseball scholarship to play at Harding University. His words of wisdom, there are up and downs in baseball, just have to ride it like a roller coaster. His future plans, major in exercise science at Harding. Ladies and gentlemen, Cooper Schutte. Our next senior is number nine, Carson Tresh. He's escorted by his parents, Dan and Stephanie. He started playing baseball at five years of age, but got a glove for his first birthday, so he's been playing pitch and swinging a bat most of his life. His varsity position is pitcher. Favorite game day accessory is sunglasses. His parents' favorite memory is mom's favorite memory is his first home run in a tournament in Oklahoma City, his smile when he rounded home. His dad's favorite memory was when Carson made the Null All-Star team and was a starting player. 
proudest accomplishment, beating Martin two years in a row. His words of wisdom to other players, be coachable. Future plans go to LSU, major in finance, and plans to be an investment banker. Ladies and gentlemen, Carson Tresh. Our next senior is number 12, Devin Rovell. Devin is escorted by his parents, Praveen and Rena Rovell. He started playing baseball at five years of age. He has played a number of varsity positions, including catcher, pitcher, first base, third base. His favorite game day accessory is a Butler Elementary necklace in his back pocket. His parents' favorite re memory, being selected and recognized by the Texas Rangers to play in the MLB All-Star Commissioner's Cup team during the 2023 MLB All-Star Week in Seattle. His proudest accomplishment, his first varsity start, his words of wisdom to other and future Vikings, don't practice to get it right, practice so you never get it wrong. His future plans attend UT Austin to pursue a double major in business and biology to become a doctor. Ladies and gentlemen, Devin Rovell. Our next senior, number 21, Wyatt Wheeler. Wyatt is escorted by his parents, Andy and Laura Wheeler. He started playing baseball when he was eight years old. His varsity position has been first base. Favorite game day accessory, sunglasses. His parents' favorite memories, well, his dad when Wyatt hit that home run at the home field. His mom being selected for the VFND award. His proudest memory uh, accomplishment at Lamar, hitting a home run against Bowie. His words of wisdom to other and future players, it was an honor to play baseball with y'all. His future plans to attend the University of Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, Wyatt Wheeler. Our next senior, number 23, Jacob Duque. He is escorted by his mother, Beatrice Urbina, and Hilaria and George Urbina, his grandparents. He started playing baseball when he was three years old. His varsity position is pitcher. Favorite game day accessory, Oakley sunglasses and a gold necklace. His proudest accomplishment or best memory, receiving the Odin Award and Pitcher of the Year Awards. His words of wisdom, don't take the time that you are given for granted and just have fun. His future plans, attend Tarrant County College and eventually transfer after a year or two to major in business or sports management. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Duque. Our next senior, number 24, Cooper Barnard. He is escorted by his parents, Michael and Crystal Barnard, and his brother, Finn. He started playing baseball when he was 10 years old. His varsity position has been center field. His favorite game day accessory is the armband. His proudest accomplishment or favorite memory, building connection with the teammates and coaches. His words of wisdom, Take advantage of the time playing baseball with your friends because it doesn't last forever. His future plans, attend McMurray University to major in nursing and play football. Ladies and gentlemen, Cooper Sunshine Barnard. Well, baseball fans, you just heard, hopefully, and saw the parade of seniors coming down the third baseline. Being honored tonight, senior night. With me in the booth tonight, my son, David Frawley. David played four years here at Lamar, played two years in college. David, do you remember senior night? Oh, like it was yesterday. Really? Oh, yeah. Was it, was it any kind of a different, like, were you nervous walking down, getting announced and all that stuff, or was it just, ah, well, here, it's what we do. Business as usual. Bu I like that, business as usual, nothing special. All right. Well, I'm, gl I'm so glad you're here. We tried to make this happen last year, and it just didn't work out. So this is really cool for you to be up here doing the color commentary and whatever other roles you want to play during, during our broadcast tonight. Tonight, the Vikings are going to take on the Bowie Volunteers. Lamar won on Tuesday night over at 
Bowie it took a little while to completely get things going and uh, get that lead that they eventually never relinquished. So they lead this series 1-0, and there are expectations that the Vikings should prevail tonight. This is one of the better offensive teams we've seen in quite a while with the, probably one of the highest numbers of runs scored per game in a long time and a lot of good bats up and down the lineup. Once again, oh, and now they're lined up. You can see them in front of their numbers. That's really cool. Jalen Humble's number one, Shryock number four, Cooper Schutte number five, Carson Tresh number nine, Devin Rovell number 12, Wyatt Wheeler number 21, Jacob Duque number 23, and Cooper Barnard at number 24. David, you were mentioning earlier, you noticed the coach of the Bowie team had the stirrup socks. And only one of their players did. Look at that. We've got what? Um, one, two, three, at least four, maybe there were. With those cool golden navy blue bands around them, stripes, whatever. Always a good touch. Always fun when the coach gets in on it, too. Did you have any superstitions as a baseball player? And I know everyone says, oh, I'm not superstitious, but did you have any little habits or things you always made sure happened on a game day or any other kind of thing? I'm trying to think through that for a second. So nothing, okay. nothing jumps out. Did you know other players that did? For sure. Oh, I can I never washed my headband. Okay. So that's one thing. For the a season washed. or the whole time in high school or college season, or whatever? Whole season. Right here. Is it too, was it too loud before? We did it like that. We're doing a little audio testing on the fly. Thank you. I think sometimes I've had it too loud and it overmodulates. Want to give a recognition to our executive producer Jay Ryan, who is in a bunker in an undisclosed location in North Arlington, Texas. And he makes all of our technology happen the way it does. Anything good, he gets credit for. Coaches and the umpires are having the meeting at home plate. And right after they break up that meeting, we will have the starting lineups and the national anthem. It's an overcast day. Wind is blowing pretty much out towards right field. When I raised the flag earlier, that's the way it was blowing then. Sometimes it'll change on us. No chance of rain, I don't believe, in the forecast, but it's definitely overcast a little bit. Jury looking, the lights are already making an impact on the field. And that wind always looks nice for the lefty hitter. I think there was one game my whole time here where it was not blowing in from right. Makes things a little easier. Might send one out to the highway. All right, well, we are ready to do the starting lineups and get that part of the game going. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for today's game. First for the visiting Bowie Volunteers. Batting first in center field, number five, Jackson Turner. Batting second is shortstop, number six, excuse me, number four, Josh Kaber. Batting third, the starting pitcher, number nine, Isaiah Henderson. Batting fourth at third base, number 11, Christian Uribe. Batting fifth at first base, number seven, Roman Ortega. Batting six, designated hitter number 19, Brody Ferguson. Batting seventh in left field, number 15, Jason Wheeler. Batting eighth behind the plate, number 13, Roberto De Leon. Batting ninth at second base, number 10, Eduardo Cervantes. And the starting right fielder, number 13, Jesus Villarreal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineup for 
your Lamar Vikings. Batting first at second base, number four, Cade Shryock. Shryock at second. Batting second in left field, number eight, Colton McKay. McKay in left. Batting third, the shortstop, number one, Jalen Humbles. Humbles at short. Batting fourth, designated hitter, number two, Luke Lazier. Lazier, the DH. Batting fifth in center field, number 24, Cooper Barnard. Barnard in center. Batting six, number six, at third base, Colton Casada. Casada at third. Batting seventh in right field, number five, Cooper Schutte. Schutte in right. Batting eighth at first base, number 12, Devin Ravel. Ravel at first. And behind the plate, number 11, Hank Austin. Austin is the catcher. The rest of your Lamar Vikings are Carson Tresh, Cole Rentz, Trey Keith, Ben Shryock, Logan Archibald, Wyatt Wheeler, and Jacob Duque. Your starting pitcher, number three, Jacob Greco. Greco is on the mound for the Vikings. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise as you're able, remove your hats, uh, honor our nation's flag, remembering those who have served our country proudly and bravely as we play the national anthem.
Leading off for the Volunteers, center fielder number five, Jackson Turner. Well, here we go for the first pitch of the game. Luke Lazier on the mound for the Vikings. First pitch misses low for ball one. Second pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. One ball and one strike. We got a Jenner some par already. <laughs> so put it that way. Did I can you see, see the chalk and yeah, okay. the batter's box? I almost said it was a ball before. And that's a, a strike on the inside, the outside edge of the inside corner. The count now one ball and two strikes, in case I confused you with all of that. Foul ball that goes on the ground over toward the visiting Doug, uh, excuse me, bullpen. Got a frog in my throat all of a sudden. The batter never wants to swing at that, but he, has, he also doesn't want to go down looking. So. And there was a chance that could happen, right? Bouncing ball to the shortstop, Jalen Humbles feels it cleanly, throws in time to Devin Rovell at first base for the 1-3, and there's one out. Excuse me, not one three, six three. Number one is what I was thinking about. The next batter for the Volunteers, shortstop number four, Josh Kaber. So David, you play catcher, so you really got to see a variety of umpire kind of. And I always remember when I was, you would ask me once or more times when you say, do you know what the strike zone is, Dad? There's a bunt attempt that goes foul up in the air off the first base line. Hank Austin makes a little chase but can't get to it. But I always remember you said, Dad, you know what the strike zone is? I said, oh, yeah, the knees to the shoulders, outside edge, whatever. And you said, no, it's whatever the umpire says it is. That's the unfortunate truth of it. And that's got to be challenging, not only as a batter but as a catcher. Especially when you're catching, you want those calls. When you get up to bat, I hope that umpire remembers you. And there's one straight down the middle for strike one. Do you ever? Do you think they ever did remember you at bat as the catcher? Always. Oh, strike two. I'm sorry. Yeah, no balls, two strikes. Yeah. Always. Yeah, and they'll. I'll turn back to them and say, "I got you." I'm okay. It, it helps being the catcher. High fly ball that stays in the infield. Third baseman Colton Casada calls for it, makes the catch. That'll go down as an F5 to get number four. The next batter is the pitcher, number nine, Isaiah Henderson. Well, a pretty quick start here, two up and two down for the Vikings defensively. The Bowie pitcher coming up to bat, right-hander. High fly ball that's going to go into fairly deep or pretty deep right field. And that just went over the fence for a solo home run. Well, that'll put the Volunteers on the board with two outs. And the team comes out to greet him. And there's that wind blowing out we were talking about earlier. Yeah, you mentioned that. It never happens at Lamar. But senior <laughs> night, Bowie shows up. It's blowing out for them. Sure enough. And it was a lefty, right? No, he was a he was a righty. Right, right. Had the PA mic on. The next batter, third baseman number eleven, Christian Uribe. I don't do that very often. <laughs> no. There's a first pitch strike. <laughs> hey, and feel free to let us know what you think about some of these, what they might really be, because they can't hear us down there through this. <laughs> A one pitch, hangs high. Ball one, one ball and one strike. I want to thank Andy Wheeler up here in the booth keeping the scoreboard and the pitch count. That pitch misses according to the umpire. I think that was low. Two balls and one strike. The two one pitch. Hank Austin tried to frame that a little bit, but uh, nothing doing from the umpire. And the count goes to three balls and one strike. Nobody on, two outs. 
Bowie has a one run on the scoreboard with the solo home run before this batter. 3-1 pitch, foul. And the count goes full at three and two. On that 2-1 pitch, it seemed the only difference was Austin was set up outside. Okay. Same exact spot as the first pitch. But where he's set up and has to move the glove, does that does that affect the call sometimes it from the umpire? It affects it. Should it? No. Okay. And there's ball four. So Bowie has a base runner now. The next batter, first baseman number seven, Roman Ortega. No coach in America ever wants to see a, a walk, but two out walks are what they despise. So two out free bases, every coach can't stand them. See how that plays out here. Good point. That pitch, okay, where did that miss? That's a slider low. Okay. And another th good thing you taught me, being a catcher, Dad, it's not where the ball ends up, it's where it crosses the plate. It can be high or low, but drop or raise or whatever, correct? Should be at least. Yeah. It's One ball, oh, go ahead. Runner looks like he's ready to go, but. High fly ball, coming foul. Oh, and just in front of the uh, netting in the wall, Hank Austin got right up there next to it and saw concrete and net. So it falls harmlessly foul for the batter, one ball and one strike. Yeah, I've noticed, David, too, the runner looks like he's been ready to go a couple of times. I don't have the scouting report, but it looks like they don't want to get thrown out. Yeah, no, with two outs already, why make that third out trying to steal? Here's the pitch, high, ball two, two balls and one strike. Lazier's looking at the runner first. Runner goes high inside the throw. Well, it was almost in time, but Shryock couldn't quite handle the throw. It was a little bit off the target. Backed up, so no other harm, but there's a stolen base for number 11, Christian Uribe. Now the count goes to three balls and one strike. Now Hank Austin, the catcher, calls time. Okay, David, you played catch. I've probably said that too many times. What's Hank Austin most likely going out to say to the pitcher right now? First question is, Lazier, is he a normal Friday starter? No. So my, my thing is here, runner on second, they got to make sure their signs are in order. Okay. So they just had the runner take second. He slipped really hard. Uh, that's one you want to throw him out on. Don't get the out after the first free base and then now a second free base. And now an intentional walk to keep the forces, correct? Yeah. So okay. they're going to make sure their signs are in order. They might be going second sign after two, uh, something like that, maybe outs plus one, just different types of ways that they can – be on the same page, don't let the runner a second look in. Number 19 designated hitter Brody Ferguson. It's a pretty smart move to intentionally walk the guy with two outs, and that way you keep a force anywhere. Swing and a miss for strike one to Brody Ferguson. He's in the uh, six hole, designated hitter, right handed batter. Here's the pitch. This is outside, possibly low. One ball and one strike now the count. Runners at first and second, four buoy, two outs. One ball, one strike. Bowie has one run on the board with the solo home run just a few minutes ago. Here's the pitch. Nice curve ball, swing and a miss, strike two. Yeah, Andy, good point. He swung at that one on the first time, and now he got him again. Let's see what he does here. He being Luke Lazier, the pitcher, with the 1-2 count. Yeah. Foul tip. Bounces into the dirt. Count stays at one ball and two strikes.
High fly ball. That's going to go foul back over the, maybe it did hit the roof. I couldn't tell. Things sound like it did hit the roof. So the count stays at one and two. Number one, Texas Aggies won today. Actually, they swept a doubleheader against Alabama, rain delay game from yesterday, and they ended up having a doubleheader and won both. Pretty big. Pitches outside, and count evens up at two and two. The ballerina. Oh, yes, the ballerina pitch, the 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> the 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <laughs> you thought of that before I did tonight. <laughs> Lazier, a very intentional pitcher, not going to pit quick pitch here. That pitch hangs high, and the count goes full. Now, David, you really don't want to walk someone to load the bases, do you? Definitely Even though there's two outs. Yeah. I don't see number 19, Ferguson, on the max prep. So I don't know if he's a if he just got pulled up or what the situation okay. is. Okay. But for him not being a varsity batter, this is good discipline here. Okay, good point. I like that. Work the full count. Yeah, he may have been pulled up from JV. Runners are going, swing and a miss. Hank Austin applies a tag, but then he also throws to first, I guess, just to make sure maybe the tag missed. But that will officially go down as a strikeout. So no real damage after the multiple free bases with two outs, but 10 or 15 pitches is never what you want to have your pitcher after a run up when there's two outs. Sure enough. In the top of the first inning, the Volunteers get one run on one hit, two left on base. We'll be, we'll be back. Leading off for the Vikings in the bottom of the first inning, number four, second baseman, Cage Shryock. Well, welcome back to the broadcast. Vikings coming up to bat in the bottom of the first inning. The Volunteers got one run on a solo shot. First pitch to Shryock misses for ball one. And the pitcher for Bowie, who's on the mound right now, hit that home run back in the top of this inning. There's a deep fly ball to left center field. The left fielder calls it, tracks it down, and there's one out. Left fielder number eight, Colton McKay. Colton McKay swings and misses at the first pitch. No most, balls and one strike. Most coaches have a few offensive goals, including to have at least one big inning, 
always answer when the other team scores. And the one we won't be able to get tonight is score first. Gotcha. That's the problem with being the home team. It's not always in your control as the offense if you're going to be able to score first. But we'll see how they respond. Okay. The next pitch, uh, strike two. So no balls and two strikes to McKay. And he gets rung up on the called strike three. Shortstop number one, Jalen Humbles. All right. So one of our seniors, Jalen Humbles, the left-handed batter, steps up to the plate. He's knocked a few out of the yard this season. Don't think I've seen one at home yet. First pitch misses for him, ball one. Same curveball that just froze McKay there. But okay. way inside on the lefty here. And that's way inside. Ball two goes all the way to the wall. So, David, that's kind of interesting. And we've talked about this sometimes when other people have been up here broadcasting or announcing, just talking. A same pitch that's outside to a righty might be a strike on a lefty. Well, there, yes, that is true. There I meant the same pitch was thrown, not in the same location. Right, okay, oh, okay, got so you. So it was for sure a strike to McKay that just froze him. Right. But that's one right there, that fastball inside. That was called a strike last half inning. On the righty. On the righty. Yeah, okay, okay, that's that's the point I was going to make. Good. Three, no, three, what's that? It's an exhibit A right exhibit there. Exhibit A, good. Three balls and no strikes. And that is ball four, so Humbles reaches on a four-pitch walk. Oh, and his bat that he tossed just collapsed in on itself. That's the problem with the Louisville Slugger, or the DeMarini of the Goods. Designated hitter, number three, Jacob Greco. So, so say that again, David. What I wasn't looking that direction. What just happened? So the Goods two-piece bat, it um, it collapses in where the the handle goes into the barrel. Oh. So Humble's home run bat there is um, not going to be able to use today. That first pitch misses inside for ball one. I've never seen a bat collapse in. Is that a new style of bat or so is not widely used in high school? The goods has been long time used, and they're known to have issues. Um, that one usually you don't see when you toss the bat back after a walk. Interesting. That pitch way outside. That was actually over in Weatherford. And the count goes to two balls and no strikes. So, uh, so explain for the ignorant like me, you can't just pull it back out and extend it out when it collapses. Is it ruined now or is it telescopic? It's you know now saying? telescopic. So we can see Hank okay. Austin over there. He's having fun with it. <laughs> acting like a pirate with the <laughs> oh, looking with through the, the eye <laughs> of the handle, the knob, if you will. <laughs> There's a throw over to first, not in time. Humbles dives back. Okay. So that might have helped out during the solar eclipse. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Ground ball that bounces to the second baseman. He'll flip to the shortstop to get the force out at second. Don't need the double play because that was out number three. So that goes down as a 4-6. We don't get any runs. We left one on base, and we'll be back.
Leading off in the top of the second inning for the Volunteers, number 15, left fielder Jason Wheeler. All right, so no relation to the Wheeler family at Lamar, Andy just said. First pitch, high for ball one. Wheeler, the number seven batter for Bowie, his first plate appearance of the night. Here in the top of the second inning, foul tip over the umpire's head to the wall. Count evens up at one ball and one strike. Bowie leads after one complete inning, one to zero after the solo shot by their pitcher, Isaiah Henderson. The one-one pitch, high fly ball that goes into medium right field just before the foul line, and that is caught by Cooper Shooty for out number one. The next volunteer to the plate, number 12, catcher Roberto De Leon. So here's another adjustment to the lineup chart. It's fun when the uh, coaches give, oh, okay, on, this, on the other list is number 12. First pitch, is that a curveball? Right down the middle. Strike one, no balls in one strike. The number eight hitter for the Volunteers. That one low goes actually between the other, like a croquet shot. It went between the wicket. The, the wicket being the catcher's legs and maybe the umpire's legs. He's going to owe kind of some push-ups for that one, I'm sure of it. Even though there's not a runner, right? You still don't let that go by. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like an experience uh, speaking there. I speak from experience there for sure. <laughs> he tried to bunt, didn't pull back in time, or it was a called strike. Either way, it's one ball and two strikes. Is there any position, what you just said kind of makes me have a question here. I'll, I'll bring it up in a minute. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. Now batting number 10, second baseman Eduardo Cervantes. Is there a position that gets the most visible visibility, critique, whatever, on the field? From the coach or the fans? Well, let's start with the coach. I like that you answered the question with a question. He went, strike one, from the coach. From the coach, usually not. Okay. But from the fans, we always view the, the catcher as like the offensive lineman. You never notice them when they do it right, and you definitely notice when they mess up. So a pass ball, a throw down to second that gets airmailed to center field. The or pop up right to him, you expect him to catch everything. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Is that a ball? Is that right? Okay, two balls and one strike. Oh, one and one. I'm sorry. I don't know why I kept thinking there's a foul ball, so it's now one ball and two strikes. Foul ball goes off over past the visitors dug out into that practice field. Yeah, there's a lag. There it is. Lag on the scoreboard from pushing the buttons on the machine. The one-two pitch, he started to go, and then he didn't, and that was a close miss. Two balls and two strikes. The two-two, the ballerina pitch. <laughs> fly ball that's going to go foul and probably land in the bullpen over there and it does and the count stays at two balls and two strikes with two outs in the second inning a lot of twos at play there David you wore number two look on the back of my shirt oh there we go wearing a playoff shirt from heck uh, you'd have to remind me was that your senior year it would have been because I did not have a junior year oh that's right so COVID. Makes that easy. Good old COVID that's true The 2-2, two -two. he swung and missed. It was strike three, but Hank Austin doesn't handle the pitch, and the runner, the batter, gets to first base on a drop, strike three. 
And the tough part, that's the number nine hitter getting on base with two outs, though. Top of the order comes up. Number five, Jackson Turner. So another inning, but the same thing. 14 pitches in, two outs. He should be out of it. But the elusive two-out free base. Lazier on the mound for the Vikings, taking time looking at the first base runner. Pitches, foul ball that's going to go probably out of play just over the netting. Devin Ravel, the first baseman, made a run at it, as did Hank Austin, the catcher. I want, I want to repeat the question. Andy Wheeler just asked David, how hard is it to pop up out of the squat and then run towards a foul ball, Dave? I mean, it depends on how creaky your knees are, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Andy and I are both like at least 30. Okay, so you being back in high school or whatever. Springboard? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the old one pitch, high for ball one, one ball and one strike. The one that takes more work is after you block. Having to get up after the oh. block and then get the ball. So using your body or whatever to keep the ball in front of you, moving around also probably. That makes sense. Because you got to find the ball also. It's not in your mitt. There's a ground ball to the third baseman. Colton Casada throws across the diamond to Devin Ravel in time. The 5-3 will end the inning. They strand one runner after the drop strike three. It's 1-0. We'll be back. Cooper, Barnard. Cooper Barnard leading off here in the bottom of the second inning. First pitch, strike one. Now, David, you may not be aware of this. Cooper Barnard has a history of crowd. Okay, you're aware. He leads the team in hit by pitch. Probably the district, maybe the state. I think that was about two inches away from hitting him, and it's a cold strike, rightfully so. That one on the outside edge, strike two, no balls and two strikes. And I love the philosophy. P coaches always hound on pitching to the outside part of the plate. Uh huh. He makes the outside pitch a middle pitch for him, and then he makes pitchers attack him inside and as it's turned out, leads the team and hit by pitch. And right there was an inside pitch for ball one, so yeah. And he's not afraid to take one either. He just stands there and plays linebacker for the football team. Going to play football at McMurray over in Abilene. He lifts that one high and deep into center field. The center fielder backtracking, chasing it. It goes over his head. Barnard's going to go to second. He's rounding. He's going to go to third. And there's not even going to be a throw that's even anywhere in time. Lead-off triple for Cooper Barnard. The next batter, third baseman, Colton Casada. Were there one or two strikes on that? Uh, 
Yeah, that was a two-strike triple. Stays disciplined, sits back on the curveball, left over the plate. Same thing, he makes that middle pitch an inside pitch and just destroys it. Colton Casada comes up to the plate, looks at a first pitch well outside for ball one. Got some later than usual slow traffic on westbound 30. One ball, no strike. Swing and a miss. Is that on off speed? Looks like he swung early. Off speed there, and he's got the same model bat that uh, Humble's broke. So hopefully this stays good for him. Okay. <laughs> I'll watch for that. The 1-1. One, one. High fly ball that's going to go foul over to the football practice field. And the count now, one ball and two strikes. No outs. Runner at third, Cooper Sunshine Bernard. Hoping to get the scoreboard evened up at one apiece. Tipped it, but the catcher catches it in his mitt for strike three. <laughs> The next Viking to the plate, right fielder Cooper Schutte. Infield's still in. They're aware of Cooper's speed. Pitch misses for ball one. That pitch hung high, maybe inside. Ball two, two balls and no strikes. Cooper and Cooper in business here. Cooper Schutte at the plate, Cooper Barnard, the runner at third after his leadoff triple. There's one out. The 2-0 pitch. Ooh, looked like it was gonna hang high, but it dropped just in time. Two balls and one strike. Be nice to see a base here. There's some acreage out there in left center. Here comes the two one, low, and the count goes to three and one. Yeah, you're right, Andy. Now the traffic has opened up a little bit more there. It seemed to be that center lane was the real problem. Swing and a miss, strike two. That left fielder looks to be properly shaded as the batter's pulled off now. I mean, he's kind of opened up and tried to pull the ball uh, twice now. Both strikes on him. Uh, the center fielder just doesn't believe it. The payoff pitch outside for ball four. Runners on the corners now. The next Viking to the plate, first baseman, Devin Ravel. Oh, Dave, I've got a question for you now. Catcher comes out with runners on the corners. I would see you do this and others. There's a, some signals. Is it? Does it change ever? Is it always just calling attention first and third, or is there ever a – we're going to do this this time. Rarely ever does it change. Okay. When you've got the two fastest players on the team, you might do something different. Normally, every time, you're going to have either the shortstop or the second baseman, one of the middle infielders, come in, and if they see the third baseman go towards home, they're going to cut it home. Gotcha. That's First pitch was a strike. Go ahead. That's 95% of the time. The other 5%, you just let it go. All Runner right. goes to second. Bernard started going. Now the throw is off the glove of the third baseman. Cooper Bernard scores, and Cooper Schutte advances all the way to third base. Scoring for the Vikings, Cooper Barnard. And that's probably their play there. They know they're not going to get the runner at second, so throwing it can never help. And there if the third baseman could have hung on to it, Cooper is out to dry. Yeah, he, he kind of got lucky there. Kind of. <laughs> now, of course, he'll say it was causing chaos on the bases, right? He used to do that. <laughs> Enjoyed watching you. 
I think it was Jalen Jones, Wednesday night, a, a JV player. He stole home on a really good uh, play. Saw you steal home sometimes in some summer games and Viking game or two. One ball, two strikes to Devin Ravel. Pitch misses outside, evens up the count at two and two. It looks like Kano's doing a good job here of telling the batter to stay back. Rather than saying, oh, don't lunge at it, he's just helping him remain calm, tell him to stay back and sit on it. He's up on that two-strike approach. There's a swing and a miss for strike three. The catcher, number 11, Hank Austin. Yes, David, that is his choice of walk-up. He changed it a couple of games ago. His parents convinced him to change it back. <laughs> he texted me just yesterday. First pitch to the dancing queen, Hank Austin. Ball one. Sounds like something the seniors would um, ask the freshman to use. Not one that he would choose to use himself, but. He used it last year also. He's a fun guy. Kind of like a mushroom. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for saying it, and I didn't have to. That swing and a miss evens up to count at one ball and one strike. Two outs, a runner at third, Cooper Schutte. Cooper Barnard scored earlier to even up the game at one to one. Foul ball off over to the football practice field area, and the count goes to one ball and two strikes. Hopefully the batters can make an adjustment here. Again, they're no. Oh. Flying open is a term coaches often use, but means they're opening up and trying to hit that pitch way before they should. Discipline there on the one-two curveball. We could hear some groans coming from the uh, buoy dugout on that one. The two-two outside. Catcher drops it, but he gets over and picks it up, so... Shooty is going to stay at third base. I hope I score. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Full count, waiting for the payoff pitch. It's on its way. Swing and a miss for strike three. That ends the inning. Three strikeouts recorded for all three outs. The Vikings pick up one. On one hit and leave one, we'll be back.
Leading off for Bowie in the top of the third inning, number four, Josh Caber. Well, welcome back to the broadcast. We have finished two innings. It's tied one to one. First pitch to Caber misses for ball one. And there's strike one, one ball and one strike. David, you were mentioning earlier, I think Lazier was kind of getting the first couple of batters out fairly quickly, fewer number of pitches, but then the pitch count would kind of add up after that. That pitch misses for ball two, two balls and one strike. Andy, how many is Lazier at right now? Next one will be 48. 48 pitches. High fly ball. Shryock is calling for it at second base, going just into the grass a little bit. Cooper Barnard coming to back him up. And there's out number one. Number nine, Isaiah Henderson. This is the guy that hits a solo home run back in the first inning. Score the only run of the game for the Volunteers. Dave, you think they would try to pitch around him at all? The wind has died down for one thing. I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so, but first pitch misses way outside. And they do see he does have the most helmet stickers on the team. <laughs> it's got to be intimidating. <laughs> I'm glad you noticed and said that. Not a fan of the football, the college football helmet stickers, are you either? <laughs> the 1-0 pitch right down the middle, but, oh, is that low? Two balls and no strikes. I think Hank Austin's already forgotten about the first inning calls he was getting. <laughs> he knows they're not strikes, but. <laughs> there speaking he goes. Of, <laughs> speaking of, there's a strike call, two balls and one strike. You know, David, I, I was suggesting a few weeks ago to uh, – uh, hold on a second. There's a fly ball that goes into right center right in the gap. It's going to roll to the fence. Henderson's going to go to second and hold up there. So a one-out double for Henderson. He's on fire. And there is definitely a cross-up. I'll get back to that after you. Number 11. Christian Uribe. Go ahead. So I uh, saw Hank Austin set up high. So I thought that's a cool idea. High fastball, get him going. Curveball is thrown. And then you see Coach over there saying, no, we wanted that in the dirt. And you never throw the 2-1 curveball high, uh, which falls right in the middle of the zone. Here they're going to remember their signs again. So hopefully we can get on things on page here with one out not let it get out of hand. Good, Good insight. You know, we could have a lot of players from a lot of positions up here helping out, but you being a catcher, I think that helps in a lot of ways. All right, waiting for the first pitch to Christian Uribe. Runner at second, one out. Here's the pitch. Outside, pop up. And Hank Austin guns him down at third. There is no good reason for that to ever happen. Yeah, that was an interesting decision to run. He didn't get that great of a jump and a perfect pop, wouldn't you say, by Hank just pretty close to it? Yeah, nothing wrong with it there. He did everything right. Well, that erases the base runner who had that double. There's a foul ball out of play. Count of leaving up to one ball and one strike. These volunteer hitters not really moving up on the plate, but they're increasing the zone, swinging at things outside. 
Interesting combination. They're making adjustments to the umpire, but making it hard on themselves while they try and do it. That pitch misses for ball two. Okay. Yeah, and, and again, going back to what we were talking pregame, this is one of the best offenses that Lamar's had in a while. In a game like this, if you're Bowie, you don't want to waste a base runner. You want to maintain that opportunity to score, especially at second in scoring position. Now we'll see if a base hit happens and he might have been brought in. That pitch misses, and the count goes to three and one. I definitely think he's doing that on his own. His first base coach comes down to meet him uh, halfway down as he runs back. And normally the coaches don't do that when they have the green light. Okay. Now Coach Kino comes out to talk to the pitcher. Sometimes we'll have Coach Goodman, the pitching coach, come out, but Kino's out here now. So, Dave, what do you think Kaino might have just gone out to say to Lazier on the mound? With three and one, two outs, runner at third. I mean, excuse me, no runner. I think that might be part of it. He says there's no runner. We're going to go right after him here. Okay. Pitch for contact kind of thing? Yeah, you do see the pitcher warming up in the bullpen. So, sometimes it is to help them get loose. Uh, don't think that's the situation here with two outs and no one on, but you never know. That's Ben Shryock warming up over there. There's a ground ball to the second baseman. The other Shryock picks it up and makes an incredible play. And he's doing it looking good with his favorite accessory wrist tape. <laughs> In the top of the third, in the top of the third inning, no runs, one hit, nobody left on. The score remains one to one. Leading off for the Vikings, Cage Ryok. Kate Shryock, the second baseman that just made that unbelievable play, trapped that ball in the dirt, picked it up and threw it over to get the out, third out of the inning. Now he's up at bat. Lead off in the order overall, leading off here in the top of the, th or excuse me, bottom of the third, tie score one apiece. Shryock calls time, it's granted, steps out of the box. Now he's back in, ready to go. Here comes the 1-1, low for ball two. Hey Dave, did chatter from the dugout from the opposing team ever rattle you at all as a batter? It never did rattle me. High fly ball that's gonna be caught by the shortstop. No, oh, it went out to center field. Did that go to center field? 
Looks like little <laughs> Adrian Beltre, Elvis <laughs> Andrews, except 100 feet apart rather than 20 feet I apart. I just spoke to her. <laughs> The next Viking, Colton McKay. Well, I'm almost embarrassed. <laughs> Did it look like the shortstop was calling for it? Or was it just it, me? It looked like he was being silly about it. Okay. Um, I was kind of worried for him now. Is that if this ball's come to him, I don't like his chances. Good thing it wasn't because. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly 0-2 for Colton McKay. Struck out looking back in the first. Strikes out looking here in the third. I shouldn't have said anything. I probably just jinxed him. Shortstop, Jalen Humbles. That's the hard part. He's probably rattled from the first one a little bit. Comes back. He sees it on the other batter's box, but this umpire has been calling it, and that's the tough adjustment. We'll see what Humboldt's going to do here with his new bat. <laughs> he walked the last time, and he, that's when he tossed the bat, and it collapsed on itself. Swings and misses at that pitch. Strike one. He is headed to Seminole State College in Oklahoma next year to play baseball. The 0-1, ground ball foul, hit hard off the uh, bullpen wall. Here comes the 0-2, misses, ball one. He's kind of on top of the plate also, would you say, when he gets up there? I'd say so. Okay. In front of the box. That's his two strike stretch. stretch yeah, leaning back. Yeah, we've talked about this 11 with the pitcher in high school game. I want a new ball. The old one goes right back in the pouch of the umpire, and he'll see it again soon. But I will I say there, he did put, it looked like he rearranged which, uh, which pouch the baseballs were in. So maybe he is going to help him out. Maybe he's just doing that for show. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. That pitch well inside, and the count evens up to give us the ballerina count to 2-2. Two -two. Do you like ballet, David? Can't say I'm a big fan of it, but teach their own. Okay. The 2-2 two -two misses outside, and the count goes full at 3-2. Never a doubt there from Humbles, and I think the umpire sometimes takes notice of that. When the batter thinks it's a ball, it might be a ball. That might influence if, if it's a close pitch or whatever. For Interesting. Sure. Okay. Here comes the payoff pitch. That's inside, and he draws a walk. Now batting for the Vikings, Jacob Greco. Yeah, their humbles was very uh, particular to place it down. Um, and then the next batter coming up did the same thing, rolled it. And no air time on that. <laughs> humbles goes. Oh, and he got under the tag apparently. Oh, now the throwback is dropped by the pitcher. Humbles looked to go to third and spins around and gets back to second before a play. The uh, Blue Volunteer fans really think he was out. I think he might have just slid under the tag. It looked like he got under there, and I think the batter might have also missed a hit and run call. Okay, and, and it was a, a strike call, so it's no balls and one strike. So I get what you're saying. Try to help the runner get there. The 0 1 pitch. That's a little looper that's going to land in shallow right field just off the dirt. Humbles comes around from second and scores. <laughs> Scoring for the Vikings, Jalen Humbles. The next Viking to the plate, Cooper Barnard. I hate to bring it up again, but there's a two-out walk to Humbles. A little 
miscue on the throwdown. What a bloop shot. And that's a run that, again, should easily be avoided by just not walking a batter, especially when you're at a 1-2 or 2-2 two, two count on him. See, good point. Thanks for that insight. Makes sense. The first pitch to Cooper Barnard, low and inside for ball one. He's gone a few at bats without being hit by pitch, hadn't he, Andy? Yes, sir. Going back maybe two games ago. Oh, oh, yeah. That one went just behind his hamstring. If he had stayed put, he would have taken that one. Did he show a bunt there at the last second? <laughs> I don't know what he did. He might have. <laughs> I think it was all just a defensive dance move. But the 2-0 pitch lifted high into sh center field. About to say shallow. And it's caught for out number three. But the Vikings pick up a run to take the lead 2-1. to one. We'll be back. Leading off for the Volunteers in the top of the fourth inning, number seven, Roman Ortega. All right, Roman Ortega is going to lead off. He got intentionally walked back in the first and was left on base then. First pitch to him, ball one. Vikings lead two to one. Here in the top of the fourth inning. Pitch is high for ball two. Yeah, Dave, it's fun when I introduce or advertise the shipwreck. Oh, wait, what's the Empire going out to talk to him about? Hmm. It's fun when I advertise the shipwreck and describe it, and you'll see, I can see the visitor stand where I am, and it's always fun because it's new to them usually or often. It's either a look of disgust or it's a look of excitement, and there's one game Ennis was here, and I literally heard the husband lean to the wife and say, you're going to have to go get me one of them. <laughs> and he, they got the shipwreck. Count three balls and no strikes. And with that 3-0 count, Shryock is moving again in the bullpen. Okay. Just catches the top of the strike zone, I believe. Three balls and one strike. Not a typical right down the middle like you often see on a 3-0 pitch. Swing and a miss, and the count goes full. Yeah, that pitch, he really helped the, our pitcher out. Here comes the payoff pitch. Curveball in there for called strike three. Well, went from a 3-0 to a strikeout looking. Swinging at ball four helps. Number 19, Brody Ferguson. Very good point, David. <laughs> yeah, because that would have been ball four that was strike two. First pitch to Ferguson goes low. 
I'm not sure what Hank tripped over there. Another cross up. <laughs> Hank's hurting here, but he's also going to tell him, we got to figure it out. That's the third one tonight. I don't know why that just made me think of the movie Bull Durham where Kevin Costner was the catcher and he'd go out and settle down that, you know, that goofy pitcher and stuff. And that just <laughs> made me think of that for some reason. Not that Lazier's a goofy pitcher. It's just the going out there and, hey, let's do this right. But Lazier doesn't have as much varsity experience. That pitch misses high, ball two. But he's doing a great job tonight overall, I would say. Gave up the one home run, gave up a double, only one walk. The intentional walk didn't really count in my book as far as he didn't walk that guy. Devin Rovell makes that fly ball out for the second out of the inning over there at first base. Number 15, Jason Wheeler. No relation to Andy in the booth or his son Wyatt on the team. Wheeler flew out to right field back in the second inning. Two outs, nobody on. First pitch to him misses. Ball one. So Bowie's only two hits are to the both to the three hole. Is that correct? Yes, the home run and the double. You're right. Wow, that pitch caught the strike zone. Do you remember one time you were talking about it was a summer league or something, but you're like, I'm going to go up to bat with my shin guards on. I can't just say. <laughs> it was 12U baseball, not my <laughs> proudest moment, and the umpire was not having fun with it. <laughs> that a little foul tip, one ball and two strikes. But, you know, I'm glad you did it. I mean, you know, some people would talk about, well, I think I might do that, but you did it. Count evens up at two and two with that miss. Something I never dared to do at the varsity level. Yeah. yeah. Probably probably more responsible decision. Yeah. Kind of might have had something to say about, the, oh, that ball bounces up in the dirt behind the catcher into the umpire. <laughs> kind of wet in wrestling. They call the midsection. <laughs> Here's the. Line, well, fly, semi-line drive that goes out to center field. Cooper Barnard makes that catch for out number three. It's three up, three down. It's two to one. We'll be back. Leading off deep in the heart of Texas for the Vikings, Colton Casada.
We go into the bottom of the fourth inning. The Vikings lead two to one after the three up, three down top of the fourth. First pitch, fly ball to deep center field that it is caught. One pitch, one out for Colton Casada. The next Viking to the plate, number five, Cooper Shooty. First pitch goes inside for ball one. Kind of a pitcher's duel here tonight. Not a whole lot of base runners on either side of the frame. Pitch hangs high for ball two. Cooper Schutte got walked back in the second inning and was stranded there. Made it around to third base, but didn't score. That pitch misses, and it's ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Pitcher Henderson in danger of putting a man on for free. Straight down the middle, three balls and one strike. Dave, did you ever get into any friendly banter conversation with the umpire as a catcher, like throughout a game? I try to. Sometimes um, they weren't the funniest and they thought they were, but <laughs> usually I had to laugh at the jokes anyway to help get the call. Just to, okay. <laughs> Foul ball there goes out of play. The count goes full for Cooper shooting. One out, nobody on. It's the game within the game. Okay. Just trying to get on the umpire's good side. Oh, and Cooper shoot. He thought that was ball four. Tosses the bat back, but he gets rung up for out number two. Stepping up to the plate for the Vikings, Devin Ravel. And that's exactly why, because we can see again, it's in the other batter's box, but he must, umpire must not hate the catcher to give him that call. Ravel thinks about it, holds back, but it's called strike one. You know, again, there's the thing, I mean, yeah, the first baseman, third baseman, they might be near, the, but they're not right next to the umpire, but the catcher's right there. And the umpire's grill. Kind of an excuse me swing, ground ball to the second baseman. And plenty of time for out number three. We go down three up, three down. It's two to one. We'll be back. Chase Home Services, interior and exterior remodeling, cover all bases, the baseball training center, Dr. Zay Orthodontics, H2H plans and engineering services, Luxor staffing for all your staffing and employment agency needs, No Frills Grill, the grill and sports bar of choice, North Arlington Little League, Painters USA for all the industrial painting needs you would have, Patriot Print Fulfillment, Arlington's Print Shop, Physicians Ageless Solutions, Modern Medical Spa Services, Raising Cane's Chicken Finger Restaurant in North Arlington, Redeemer Presbyterian Church of Arlington, Shep's Fencing and Outdoor Living for Custom Fences, Patios and Pergolas, 3DI Sign and Design, your sign company of choice. Remember, if you can, patronize these businesses and find a way to tell them thank you for supporting Lamar Baseball. Thank you, Andy, because I was going to forget again. At first, I'm like, what are you uh, doing there? And I was like, oh, yeah. Go to YouTube and search for Lamar Viking Radio. Leading off in the top of the fifth inning for Bowie. Number 12, 
Roberto De Leon. Well, welcome back to the broadcast, the game here. First pitch to the leadoff hitter for the top of the fifth inning for Bowie. Strike one. This is Roberto De Leon. He's the number eight hitter. He's the catcher. And leading off here in top of the fifth. Swing and a miss for strike two. De Leon struck out swinging back in the second inning. The 0-2 pitch just outside for ball one, one ball and two strikes. Foul ball, it goes just over the top of the visitor stands. I gotta say, I'm feeling refueled with this hot dog. It's yeah. going for best hot dog of the week. It's only competition is Sonic, so not saying much, but it's hitting the spot. But it was cooked on a flat top grill, which is better than just boiled weenie and some water oh, or yeah. microwave, so yeah. It's hitting Sonic by a long shot. Count evens up at two and two. Well, that's good to know. Doug McKay is quite the chef down there. Grilling up some pulled pork. That pitch misses high, goes full, three and two. Burgers, hot. He's got a real special seasoning and mix of stuff he uses on the burgers, too. And I heard there's going to be hibachi next week. Really? And I'm not going to be here. I'm not either, man. <laughs> I would love that. High fly ball on the full count. Devin Ravel looks to be able to play it at first. Oh, he misses it. Don't know if he lost it in the lights or the wind. The might have swirled around a little bit. Okay, David. And didn't touch his glove. Do you call that an error or a hit? Sadly, that's an error. Uh, with okay. an ordinary amount of effort, he's expected to make the play. That's kind of what I thought. And I like that ordinary expected or, or blah, 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 amount of effort. Number 10, Eduardo Cervantes. Hey, say that clearly one more time. Can't say it's a direct quote from the rule book, but it's right. an ordinary amount of effort if you're expected there to make you the go. play. Okay. That's when it's going to be an error when you mess up. EmpireBible.com. Oh, is there really? Okay, Andy, thanks. I thought you were kind of kidding around. Batter misses the sign. See the coach waving across his belt. That's the old school bunt sign. Don't know if that plays out here, but runner on first, no one out. And the coach is way off third base. I mean, he's almost in the dugout <laughs> with our team. We're almost to the bullpen. Because I kept, you know, reaching around and looking. Well, where is he? There's the pickoff attempt. Sometimes that's fun. Whenever the batter calls time, they get a new sign in. Might help foil them. Might help the. Bunt pushed down the first base line. Lazier picks it up, throws to first in time. So the runner is advanced on the sacrifice bunt. Oh, and their coach is not happy about that. The batter, or the runner is supposed to go to third on that. Like just keep on running, following his yeah, signals or whatever. Like button run. It wants to go first and third to that. Number five, Jackson Turner. So you can you can see the coach, and I can't. He didn't look happy, huh? So it's no surprise the bunt was coming. He waved his belt about a dozen times. Old school bunt sign right there. But the the sneaky part was the runner was supposed to go first and third. One of our viewers texted me and said, yep, that is an error in his book also. So, like it when we get some comments and hellos from folks. Haven't seen anything from our Canadian fan tonight yet, eh? She might be watching. Might be at the hockey game, the Jets, yeah, eh? <laughs> Foul ball, no balls, and one strike. I think Shane is probably listening over and watching over in Fort Worth. Donna up in Hazlet. Timing. Now out in Decatur. Timing play, run well there on the pickoff attempt. Humbles flashes his glove, says one with thousand, two and thousand. Spins around and attempts to pick, but not good enough. There's another spin around. Hunter dives back. Timing was off on that one, but still in the runner's mind. 
Got a Nebraska fan, Deb in Omaha watches. Got fans all over the place. Speaking of Omaha, I want to go to the College World Series this year. See the Aggies. Left field, they're shaded in from Kino. There's another bunt pushed down the third baseline. Lazier picks this up, throws in time. Just a minor stretch needed from Ravel to complete that out. So another 1-3 sacrifice bunt, second one in a row. Now there's a runner on third, but with two outs. Does that surprise you, Dave? It doesn't, probably because I saw the coach wave again on his belt. Number four, Josh Kaber. And I think the expectation there is if you can bunt it down the third base line, uh, catcher might be away from home plate, more chaos. It's going to be a lot harder for them to even get the out. That's, out. Okay. And so you then, could end up with runners on the corner. And you could end up with that runner scoring if they do the same play. Okay. I got you. Runner at third, two outs. Here's the first pitch to this batter. It misses. Josh Kaber. He's the shortstop. Yeah, now Coach Goodman coming out to visit the mound. With a count one ball and no strikes. Okay. So after a visit to the mound, comes back to the one ball, no strike count to Josh Kaber. He flew out to the second baseman back in the third inning, flew out to the third baseman in the first inning. So he's 0 for 2. A couple of fly balls in the infield. Pops one up here, but that's going to go foul out of play. Oh, <laughs> he just saw that ball. The security guard just saw that ball go up in the air. Count evens up at one ball and one strike. Lazier looks at the runner at third. Now pitches. Jams him inside. Fouls that ball over toward the Viking dugout on the ground. And the count goes to one ball and two strikes. And Kaber came in tonight with the second most extra base hits for the Volunteers. So if we can... Limit the damage here with two strikes, two outs. Fly ball to deep left field. Well, now it's a high ball to mid left field, and that is caught by Colton McKay for the third out. Well, David, good timing to get back and call for that. No score, no hits. One left on in the top of the fifth. It's two to one. We'll be back.
right, welcome back to the broadcast here. Hank Austin, the number nine hitter overall for the Vikings, leads off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. First pitch to him, strike one. Vikings lead two to one. Hank struck out swinging in the second inning. Yeah, the, the catcher really moved the glove there. One ball, one strike. That evens up the count. And it worked on the first pitch, so why not try it again, <laughs> except you look a little silly. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad for Austin's sake he got the correct call, because on the first one. Hank Austin swings and misses at that one. It was pretty far outside. And then taps the uh, bat on the ground for good luck, we'll say. <laughs> Count goes to one ball and two strikes. Kind of wants to talk to Hank Austin now. What do you think he might be saying to him? He's definitely settling him down. He saw strike one on the chalk again in the lefty batter's box. Swings at a slider in the dirt. Not happy after some of the, the woes from the last half inning with the runners. One ball, two strikes to Hank Austin. Leading off here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Nobody on, nobody out. Here's the pitch. <laughs> and another big sweeping move by the catcher with his glove. The count is now two and two. Two balls and two strikes. A little ballerina pitch here coming up. And the Dancing Queen song guy at the bat, at the plate. Man, this guy takes a while to pitch. Hank Austin calls time. It's granted. Do you see this? He's tapping his bat. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> not saying it's a superstition, but it's, um, it's a regular of some sort. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that one's high. Maybe a hair inside. The count goes full. I'd really like to see Hank get a hold of one this time. He's some kind of a, yeah. I'll have to ask him afterwards. It might be a three or four word. Uh, mantra, he tells himself. Okay. And Seems like he's mouthing something along with each tap of the bat, but we'll have to figure that out later. All right. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. The next Viking to the plate, Cade Shryock. So now one out with nobody on for the Vikings, who lead two to one here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The wind has picked back up just a little bit, blowing out towards right field again. Call strike there, strike one to Shryock. So there, the slider that he got Austin to swing at, is, uh, he hits his spot this time for a first pitch strike. He knows that most batters aren't swinging at first pitch off speed, so good time for him to get ahead. Shryock called time, it looked like. It was granted. Now the catcher goes out to talk to the pitcher. Shryock has been hitting it out of the infield tonight. He flew out to center field in the third, flew out to left field in the first. Maybe he could kind of get it in that gap between left and center this time. The left fielder playing a pretty much standard middle part of the field, though. There's not any big gap anywhere, really. Here's the 0-1. Wow, Shryock really far back off the plate, it looked like. Would you say the same? During the pitch or before? Dur well, definitely before, but I thought during also. Maybe he stepped, he leaned in more. Yeah. I saw that spin on the slider and just said he wouldn't know part of it. That's strike two. Yep, here comes the 0-2. Fly ball that goes into right field, so he's going to hit one to each of the fielders. And there's out number two. That quick pitch gets the better of him right there. Stepping up to the plate for Lamar Colton McKay. But two straight sliders and then a quick pitch fastball. He just let it loose. That's always tough. First pitch to McKay. Wow, the upper right-hand corner of the strike zone, would you say, according to the umpire? Strike one, no balls and one strike. Now, McKay has had called strike three his two previous at-bats. Let's see if he can... Figure something out here. Wow, doesn't swing at that one. That was a pretty good pitch there. Same thing. 
most high school batters are going to say, unless there's two strikes, I'm not swinging off speed. But it might be time to change that. that well, let's see. That. Yeah, what he gets here. Fastball gets him. He swung that time. Three up, three down, bottom of the fifth. The Vikings still lead. We'll be back. Leading off for Bowie in the top of the sixth inning, number nine, Isaiah Henderson. Well, welcome back to the broadcast. We are in the top of the sixth inning. The Vikings lead two to one in this somewhat pitcher's duel. Lazier still on the mound for the Vikings. First pitch called strike one pretty much right down the middle. 87th pitch. Probably not 87 miles an hour, though, correct? Oh, at least. <laughs> at least. So Henderson got that solo home run, the only run on the scoreboard for the Volunteers so far. Then he hit the double back in the third inning, and this is his third plate appearance. The 0-1 pitch on its way. High fly ball that's going to go foul out of play. Plenty of time by Lazier on the mound between pitches. Here comes the 0-2. Oh, it hits him. Oh, on the forearm maybe. That, oh, that looks like that is painful. I wonder if there's an injury there besides just getting a deep bruise. Maybe the wrist or the forearm. Let's I'm trying to see what he's really grabbing there. Yeah, the lead, the bat, the hand that was out in front. Hank Austin, good sportsmanship, picks up his bat and hands it to him. One of the coaches coming out to take a look and the trainer for Bowie. He's not having any part of being examined. He says, I'm just going on to the base. So hit by pitch will put him on. The next volunteer to the plate. Number seven, Roman Ortega. Wait, what What happened to number 11? Uh, yeah, do y'all you need anything? Dave? Okay, thanks. First pitch strike there. Okay, I'm, I'm messing, I'm missing something. Who was that that got hit by the pitch? Number nine. Yeah. Now they've skipped a batter. They've 
This guy is supposed to be the not up next. The guy on deck is supposed to be batting right now. Yeah. They've reversed number seven and 11. And I don't know if anyone's paying attention to the lineup card over in the Viking dugout or if they really care, but batting out of order is usually an out, isn't it? He shows bunt, but at his home plate, I think, and bounces off. Or was that a foul, I guess? Yeah, foul. Because the runner didn't advance. It had to have been a. I'm really confused what's going on. Well, meanwhile, Shyock's warming up in the pen again, having some fun dancing around. Throw back or throw over to first. Runner gets back in time. Man, I wish we could somehow let the dugout know that this guy's batting out of order, but it's not our place to do so. 0-2 pitch misses outside, ball one. Yeah. Hank kind of did a semi-pop-up look at the runner at first. Foul ball grounded over to the buoy coach well off third base. Count stays at one and two. Just double checking, Game Changer also says that number 11 is batting. So, yeah. So when is it too late for Lamar to notice it after this guy finishes his at bat? Cooper Barnard's going to run over to left center and pick up that fly ball. Goes down as an F8. So that got number 11, no, number 7, but it should be number 11. Stepping up to the plate now, number 11, Christian Uribe. Yeah, how many pitches is Lazier? 94, and Goodman coming out to visit with him and probably say, hey, great job tonight. The only run being that home solo home run, and he's only walked one. I'm not going to count the intentional walk against him just for conversation purposes. Looks like Ben Shryock is going to take the mound now for the Vikings. We'll turn down our mics while we play some warm-up music for him. We'll be back.
terms of a dugout or bench area. So what has happened here while the mics were off, and we I think we might have mentioned this on the air before, but there was a batter out of order. 11 should have come up. Seven came up. And now 11 is declared out for batting out of order. So now we're up to number 19. So there's two outs now just to kind of catch you up. What's going on? The runner goes. Hank Austin throws. Jalen Humbles comes over and catches it. It's way offline to the right. So the runner will get a stolen base. So number 11 was supposed to bat when number seven was batting. Number seven flew out to center field. 11 was coming up to the plate. He's declared out after the coaches for Lamar call it to the attention of the umpires. And so according to rule 7-1-2, <laughs> yes. there should not be a runner on base. His, uh, he should have been pulled his back. His time at bat should be negated, and he should return to the dugout. But that did not Oh, happen. you know what, though? But he was already on base. It was seven that batted out of order that flew out. So number nine batted when he was supposed to, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why he stays on, I think. Okay. No balls and two strikes to catch you up with the pitch count. Thanks for looking that up, Dave. Cooper Bernard's flashing some signals from center field. Interesting. I'm not sure what they have running. I didn't see him at first because of the poles right in my view. That pitch misses one ball and two strikes. But yeah, he was doing something, didn't he? He just has a lot of fun out there. <laughs> yeah, he does. You'll be yelling at the umpires and grabbing the stride. <laughs> <laughs> One, two count, runner at second, he goes to third. Hank throws to third, but the tag is off, or the tag doesn't happen, and the runner is safe at third. So the tying run for the Volunteers is at third base, but there's two balls, two strikes, and two outs. That's a lot of twos. A lot of twos. But I'm never too tired to do this fun job. <laughs> Shryock ready to deliver the 2-2. Ground ball to the third baseman. It's bobbled by Casada. He one-hops it. It's not going to be in time. That's an error, but the run, tying run scores. Scoring on the play, Isaiah Henderson. Now batting number 15, Jason Wheeler. Henderson has scored both runs for Bowie tonight. The solo home run, and now scoring after he got hit by a pitch. That'll clear the bases. Now we've got a pinch runner. Excuse me, I'm sorry. No, it was a uh, the guy reached on an air. My bad. Pinch runner for that batter. Number 13 will come to first base. Running at first base for Bowie. Number 13, Jesus Villarreal. Thank y'all spotters for doing the catching that. And that is actually a pinch runner, not a courtesy runner, because that was the DH that reached. All right, Jason Wheeler comes up to the plate. He flew out to center field in the fourth. Flew out to right field in the second. Pitch on the inside edge, strike one, called. And the pinch runner there was ready to run. He had a false step, tripped himself up, tried to go too early and decided not to run, but we'll see if he goes here on the next pitch. Okay. Like that insight, thank you, David. Here's the 0-1, off speed, swing and a miss, strike two. No balls and two strikes, two outs. Can we get the third out here? Strand that runner. No balls, two strikes, two outs, two to two. The runner goes. Kind of a lazy line drive, drops for a base hit in shallow left field. Runners at first and second now. Wouldn't 
be a nice time to see someone bat out of order again, wouldn't it? Number 12, Roberto De Leon. What are the? No balls and one strike. Pitch goes foul. Your attention please, two vehicles are blocking a bus needing to exit the parking lot of Blue Bronco TCT 5316 and a white Tesla MTJ 8729. Please move your vehicles, thank you. Made efficient work of that announcement there. Thank you, Roger, and the foul ball, thank you. <laughs> the 0-2 pitch with two outs, two on. Shryock looks over at second base. No one holding. The runner goes to third. Looping curveball. Hank pops quickly, but I think he had just a good enough jump that he is legitimately there safe on the double steal. And now two runners in scoring position with a count, one ball and two strikes. Hank was not pleased, but I think that was the correct call. And I think Goodman's doing a good job of doing the best he can to calm Hank down because <laughs> three or four stolen bases in one inning is going to eat any catcher up. And he knows that it's not on him when runner's not being held on. Yeah. That always makes it tough. Because he had a really good jump on that, didn't he? It's the part that never makes sense. When the second baseman breaks away from the bag as the pitcher steals, something's not right. The one-two pitch on its way, high, ball two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Two to two the score. Number one, two at the plate. What's your favorite number, Dave, what you wore sometimes? Going seven. Okay, you wore two quite a bit though, yeah. I like seven. The two-two pitch, oh, it's way high. Now the count goes full. Empty base at third, I mean at first. But you probably don't really want to give up the free pass here. You'd rather pitch for contact, wouldn't you? Or strikeout. Or strikeout, but yeah. Yeah. The payoff pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. And I don't know the runner knew what he was doing there. He was halfway to home with no runner on first. Even if it's ball four, we're out of the inning. Yeah, because he was going to be tagged, wasn't he? Yeah. All right. Well, we dodge a bullet there with only one run being scored. It ties the game 2-2. We'll be back.
Leading off for the Vikings, at the bottom of the sixth inning, Jalen Humbles. Well, welcome back to the baseball game, ladies and gentlemen. It's two to two. The Bowie Volunteers just tied it up in the top of the sixth inning. We're going into the bottom of the sixth. Jalen Humbles leading off for the Vikings. First pitch to him, swung on a miss for strike one. I think Jalen sees that wind blowing out to right. He knows what he can do, but. Yeah, you gotta have the right pitch, don't you? Along that pitch inside for ball one. Oh, they're gonna say no pitch. Well, and is what's interesting, I never heard the field umpire call time earlier, but he says, hey, the first baseman was tying his shoe. So that goes down as a no pitch, I believe, right? Oh, and one, yeah. Umpire hid the ball strike count from us. Ground ball to the second baseman. He bobbles it. Humbles is going to run fast and get on there. On an E4. And that puts the leadoff runner on for the Vikings. Number three, Jacob Greco. Now the first baseman tying his shoes again. Maybe tying the other shoe. Well, it's good to get the leadoff batter on, however it happens. That was an error on the second baseman. Well, it wasn't there. It was a hard hit error for sure. Bunt attempt goes foul. So would you say that was actually a base hit? Or? It's definitely an error. Okay, but it was tough to handle, right? Right. Okay. And the second baseman's probably going to go tell his coach. Coach, it was a bad hop. <laughs> well... Still With better feet, you make good hops. And so that's the unfortunate truth of that. When it's, okay. hit, it's probably hit 90, 95 plus off the bat. You're gonna exit have to do Exit velo. <laughs> You're going to have to do everything right to make that play. I love that term. Well, that's a good insight there. So Greco has strike one after the bunt attempt goes foul off the third baseline. Humbles the runner at first. Shows Bunt again. That one goes foul behind him. Humble's moving, but he'll have to come back to first base. And now the count goes to no balls and two strikes. Throw back over to first base. Nothing doing. Humbles dives back in plenty of time. Ready to deliver the 0-2 pitch. It's high, and the count goes to 1-2. and two. This is senior night. We recognized our senior players right before the ball game. There's eight of them. A few of them going on to play ball at the next level. Some saying that's it for now. I'm going to focus on college and other activities, which is the most common thing that happens, it seems like. One and two the count. Nobody out. Jason Humbles, the Viking runner at first. Tie score. Pitch out. Greco thought about swinging at that at first. Wisely pulled back in plenty of time. The count evens up at the ballerina. I think every part of that was a swing except for the bat. He somehow held back. <laughs> His belly button was facing center field. <laughs> I like the way you put that. And there's a called strike three. The next Viking to the plate, Cooper Barnard. Well, let's see what Cooper Barnard does here. He had shown bunt earlier in a previous at bat. Flew out to center field back in the third. There's ball one. Catcher first just uh, looking for the baseball, but then he picks it up. Make sure Humble stays at first, and he does. Bernard does a 
good job of being a statue there. He knows that anytime he moves, it's going to be an automatic out for him. So he has to stand perfectly still, and he does. And then right after the play, he gets on to Humbles for not going to second. He says, <laughs> ball in the dirt, we're moving. <laughs> Let's go. Throw back over to first again. Two throws to first and one to the batter. The 1 0 count. Here comes the pitch. Shows bunt, pulls back. Humbles is moving and he is out at second. Here's the unfortunate part about high school baseball. Humbles is more than sure he swam moved the tag. I mean, he got his art, right arm in there and pulled his left arm back, but we don't have video replay. And home plate umpire is surely not going to overturn that. Kino goes out to double check and with does, the field umpire. He does that just to show his players that he cares about them, but he knows yeah. that it's a lost cause. Sure. The pitch was a ball, so the count goes to two balls and no strikes, but that takes Humbles off the bases. And there's two outs. Here in the bottom of the sixth, two to two score. The fake bunt steal, not always a bad play, especially when you can draw your bat back into catcher, but on the high and outside pitch, fake bunt wasn't a factor at all. Gotcha. Foul ball goes to the parking lot. Got to do that glass shatter once every game or two. Swing and a miss for strike two. And now two balls, two strikes, two outs, and nobody on. With the score tied at two to two. Here's the pitch. Little looper that's caught by the third baseman on the run for out number three. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. It's two to two, we'll be back. Leading off in the top of the seventh inning, number 10, Eduardo Cervantes. That's a fun name to say, Eduardo Cervantes. First pitch to Cervantes, swings, fouls, strike one. Finally, the 0-1 pitch comes. Outside, ball two. I 
I think he might be glad he didn't get the bunt down. His whole foot looked to be outside of the batter's box, about a quarter of the way to pitcher's mound. Waiting for the 1-1 one -one pitch. He shows bunt, pulls back, he goes to two and one. I don't want to say it's a must win game for the Vikings, but they really need this win. They need to sweep Bowie this week to maintain really good standings for the playoffs. They're gonna make the playoffs, I don't want to jinx it, but but you want to be in that two spot maybe. Shows Bond, pushes it down the first baseline, it goes foul. So the count goes two and two. Is that what you're – why would you try to bunch your way on? Is that – Not that. Oh. Neither of our corner infielders moved in. Oh. After three consecutive Bunt shown bunts. So. <laughs> well, I, I saw your face, and I was looking back up, and I was like, well, wasn't sure what you were grimacing about there. Now I get it. In addition to maybe bunting your way on with – So with two strikes, you don't think the bunt's coming, but you never know. Infield – Corner infield still back. Batter calls timeout, steps out of the box, steps back in. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out, nobody on. Top of the seventh, score tied at two. Now batting number five, Jackson Turner. So the top of the order for the volunteers and the batter is no closer to home plate, even though he got called out on strike three, I think earlier in the game. And he just saw his teammate go down looking on the outside pitch. See, at some point they've got to make the adjustment, but we'll, we'll keep taking called strike threes. Hits that ball foul over on the wall of the visitors bullpen off the first baseline. The count goes to one and one with one out. The one one catches the inside edge and it goes to one and two and Andy you're correct that was a nice pitch. Now the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Foul tip into the glove, yep, just like you said, Andy. So I said swing and a miss is actually foul tip and caught it on the tip strike three. Number four, Josh Caber. Yeah, and Austin snow coned it as much as you can, at least with the catcher's mitt there. And I may be hearing things. I heard it hit dirt, but he sold it well enough. We got strike three. Okay. That's a very long foul ball. Goes into the home bullpen off the first baseline out towards left field. And so Caber starts off with an 0-1 count. Flew out to left field back in the fifth inning. Oh, that's a nice pitch. I thought that was going to be inside, and it curved back or broke back just in time. No balls and two strikes. Here's the 0-2. It's going to bounce once in front of Cade Shryock at second. Throws just in time to Devin Wavell at first. It's three up, three down. We'll go into the bottom of the seventh inning, which is the final regulation inning in Texas high school baseball after this.
Leading off in the bottom of the seventh inning, Colton Casada. Well, here we go into the bottom of the seventh inning. Seven innings is regulation in Texas high school baseball. The score is tied two to two. Colton Casada, the number six hitter, leads off. Screaming ground ball that goes. It is fair. Oh, wait, I thought that was fair. Wow. I thought it went over. Did it, did it go off to the left, Dave? Yeah, it's because the, the bounce right before the bag, it was like a foot in front of the bag, uh -huh. the last bounce fair, and then it was about six inches foul. Afterwards. Okay, after that. Okay, gotcha. So if it had been even with the bag, it would have been fair. Okay. I saw the bounce in front, and then I missed where it went off. Okay. So it's a good call. Oh. Oh, that pitch. Umpire's face. Bounces in the dirt and comes up into the umpire's face. Maybe yeah. Maybe his ear. Huh? So maybe his ear. What? He, he doesn't have <laughs> an ear hole protector on that one. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's just the old-fashioned mask. Yeah, he was. he's really rubbing that right ear. But the, Take, the 91st uh, pitch for Henderson, Bowie coach has got to be happy whenever you're going into the seventh inning under 90 pitches. Less than 15 for any. That's that's efficient work, especially for high school baseball. The 1-1. One, one. Outside for ball two. He really moved that glove after laughing that good. I don't know what's worse in sports, the 12-inch the glove movement on the catch or flopping in basketball. <laughs> You've narrowed it down to two. That's outside. The count goes to three and one. Well, maybe into the 90 pitch range, Henderson's starting to wear down a little bit because he is now in danger of putting the leadoff batter, Colton Casada, on at first with a 3-1 count. Reaches out, tags that ball. It's going to go into right field pretty deep, and that's going to be caught for out number one. The next Viking to the plate, Cooper Shooty. All right. One out, nobody on. The first pitch to Shooty is high for ball one. Can we walk this thing off here in the bottom of the seventh? Got to get a base runner on. Swing and a miss, strike one. Or just hit one over the wall. You don't have to get a base runner on. Just knock it over the wall. You take care of business. When your seven hole has the third highest batting average, that's a pretty good guy to come up in this spot. Strike two. <laughs> I don't know that the that the movement call. I think he was going to call that on the outside edge anyway. I think, but <laughs> that was a drastic, dramatic, not just framing but swipe of the catcher's mitt. And there's a called strike three there. Wow. Did that look low at all? Not low, but that thing is in the chalk of the batter's box. The next Viking to the plate, Devin Ravel. <laughs> hey, Coach Suen. Coach Suen comes up to the box to visit us. First pitch, strike one. Looking for the next pitch. Misses inside. It's one ball and one strike. 100th pitch. That one are coming up. That was 100 pitches for Henderson. The 1-1 one, one, up high, 2-1.
3-1 pitch, kind of a defensive swing. Fouls it back over to the net in front of the visitor stands. The count goes full at three and two. So Devin Rovell gets on with a walk. And now to about, oh yeah, yes, we got it. Okay. Hank Austin at the plate, swings and fouls that one off. No balls and two strikes. Logan Archibald running for Devin Rovell at first base. Two outs. Pitch is inside and it goes to one and two. Pitcher Henderson looks over at first. Not a big lead at all by Archibald. Here's the pitch outside, two balls and two strikes. Hank Austin pretty disciplined there, I'd say. Dave, what do you think? Definitely so, especially after a called strike three on a similar pitch about three innings ago. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the seventh, two to two, the pitch. On the outside edge, I saw that coming. Called strike three. We're about to have free baseball going into the eighth inning. We'll be back.
All right, we are back live, going into the top of the eighth inning. It's extra innings. Two to two is the score. First pitch on the inside edge for strike one. Fly ball that's gonna go foul into the stands, it looks like. Oh, it did, it hit the back of the, uh, hit the back of the uh, stands, the wall, or whatever you want to call it, the chain link edge. No balls and two strikes. Ground ball hit sharply to the third baseman, throws over the stretch, pulls his foot off the bag. I think that's an infield single. He didn't bobble that, I don't think. Someone can tell me if that's not correct. My, my notes are just really for me anyway. Number 11, Christian Uribe. And I hope Humbles can let that one go because that's the second one the third baseman has cut off that has ended up with a safe batter at first base. And you have to know, that's the third baseman to take if he can get there, but especially when you see him go on, uh, go down to one knee to get the ball and then you know you're on the way to college next year, you think that that's your ball, it's, it's always a tough one and it's a safe, but you've got to trust the third baseman making a play on it. Pitch is outside, ball one. Great block kind of pick there uh, from Hank Austin behind the plate. Helping save the runner from advancing. One ball, no strikes. One on, nobody out. Top of the eighth, two to two. Here's the pitch. Shows bunt, pushes it down the first base line. Ravel picks it up, and he will tag the runner out coming down the baseline. So that'll go down as a G3, number 11. Number seven, Roman Ortega. So Lamar is for sure in the playoffs, uh, which is cool to see. I was not keeping exactly up with that. Mm -hmm. But a win here uh, would get us our ninth district win, keeping us in line with uh, Arlington, South Grand Prairie, and Martin coming into tonight. Okay. First pitch misses high for ball one. So then the win here with at least one next week, um, hopefully two next week, but some help otherwise would get us out of the fourth spot into the second or third spot. Gotcha. Yeah, it really hurt getting swept by Arlington last week. To split with them would have been good. We split with uh, Martin early in district play. Foul ball, strike one, count evens up. Yeah, and you really, the being number two, maybe three is okay still, but you really don't want to be number four going into the playoffs because that district we have to play that has J.J. Uh, Pierce, Jesuit. Lake Highlands. Lake High, yeah. Um, ben Shryock, the pitcher, steps off the rubber, turns and looks at second. The runner gets back. That's his brother at second base. It would be fun to see Shryock to Shryock for an out. Pitch is outside. Hank gets a good pop time, but unfortunately it's a little bit high and to the left, and the runner gets from second to third with a stolen base. Well, I sure would like to prevent this guy from scoring and Bowie taking a lead going into the bottom of the eighth. So it's one out, infield comes in on the grass. Third baseman far in front of the bag. Suicide squeeze always an option. That's, a, that's what I was just thinking that the fun part of high school baseball right now, uh, fun in quotes, is that there's no restriction on timeouts. Ground ball hit sharply to the third baseman, Casada, who was on the grass. Picks it up, checks the runner at third, makes the out at first. So that was a really good thing because now there's two outs. 
Really heads up play there. Yeah, and one of the big differences uh, still in high school is that defensive conferences are only when a coach. Number, that's 19. Number 19, Brody Ferguson. Nope, number 13. Correction, number 13, Jesus Villarreal. Yeah, one of the big differences is defensive conferences are only when a coach or a non-player personnel comes out and has a meeting. And then on offense, it's only if the coach and player talk. First pitch, strike one, okay. And so with that, we've seen an extreme amount of um, time called for from the players. Either in the box or the catcher going to talk to the pitcher, right? Right on. And all these pitchers tonight have been pretty slow and deliberate, too. There's not a very quick cadence. The 0-1. Oh, the curveball loops into the strike zone. Villarreal, the uh, pinch hitter here, kind of ducked down like he thought that was going to be inside, but it broke over. He calls time while he's out of the box. It's granted, now he comes back in. No balls and two strikes. Boy, a strikeout here would be something impressive to get this third out. A fly ball, a ground out. A lot of ways to get this third out and prevent that run from scoring. High fastball call here. Just missed. He hits the high fastball, and that's a perfect spot for 0-2, two outs, runner on third. Because it's too high to get a good cut at it, correct? Yeah, not in the dirt. You don't have to roll the block. Okay. You're not going to do anything with it. So no damage done to maybe now with the high off speed or high fastball can get off speed in here. The one two. High fly ball going into center field. Cooper Barnard comes over, makes the catch for out number three. And no run is scored. It's two to two. We'll be back. All right, we go into the bottom of the eighth inning. Cade Shryock, lead off overall, leading off here in the bottom of the eighth for the Vikings. First pitch hits the strike zone. No balls in one strike. So one of y'all that's been up here all season, will you fill me in? Is this his normal batting stance, or is this an adjustment where his foot is in line, his, back, his front heel is in line with his back toe. Pitch is inside. I think that's pretty much the standard for him batting stance I've seen all season. Yeah, good question. Count goes to one ball and one strike. Really kind of aiming towards right field there, isn't he? Oh. 
That pitch, according to the umpire, which by our account was through downtown Fort Worth off to the west, was strike two. It looks like he's set up trying to hit a draw in golf. Um, so maybe that will help him, help him hit it out to right field. Oh, fouls that off the catcher's helmet. He's, umpire gives the uh, catcher a chance to see if he needs to catch his breath or anything. Yeah. No, what I was, I was going to mention earlier, I've talked to the people downstairs and saying we should have someone take a pair of glasses to the concession stand and say we found these. And then I can make an announcement. Your attention, please. We found a pair of glasses. They're at the concession stand, lost and found. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. <laughs> exactly. Wow. And see, there's one that I think has been called a strike before tonight. Full count. Payoff pitch to our leadoff batter overall and our leadoff batter in this bottom of the eighth inning. Here's the payoff pitch, swings, it's a ground ball to the pitcher. He picks it up, underhands it to the first baseman for out number one. And it looks like he was set up to hit that golf draw. It did go towards the right, just not in the air like we needed it. Is this Trey Keith's bat, right? Yeah. I thought that's what I saw. Now batting for the Vikings, number 13, Trey Keith. Anything, Dave? Trey Keith steps in to bat for the first time in place of Colton McKay. First pitch to him high for ball one. Trey Keith also a catcher at times. The 1-0 pitch on its way, swings and misses, strike one, one ball and one strike. Jalen Humble's on deck. The 1-1 hangs high for ball two. David, did you uh, have this approach at some point in your baseball career, whether it was junior high, high school, whatever, that you go up expecting to hit the ball. There's a line, or I mean a high fly ball into left field, but it is caught. Goes down as an F7 for number 13, and coming up, Jalen Humbles. Stepping up to the plate, Jalen Humbles. Did, did you ever have that, like, okay, I expect to hit the ball, then you hold back, or was it... Uh, I'll see if it hit them, you know? Well, that should be the approach. Anything else just seems wrong. And okay. uh, how it plays out is an active take. Uh, and so that looks like you're doing everything to put yourself in the best position to hit the ball hard uh, until you know that it's a ball or one that you're not going to be able to hit hard. First pitch is a called strike one to Humbles. Okay. That right there is a tough pitch because that's one that you think the coach is telling you to take till you get a strike for the principal. Right. But when that looks like a meatball down the middle and you, your coach told you to take it, that's going to test someone's character right there. Coachability? One could say. <laughs> one ball and one strike now to Humbles. Two outs, nobody on. Bottom of the eighth, two to two score. Pitch is well outside, ball two. Andy, you were here for the Martin game that did go 11 innings. We walked it off. That was when we split with Martin. Lights went out at 10 o'clock on the timer for about 20 minutes or so, or it was 20-something minutes before the game got started again. They had to warm them up again. That pitch way outside, and the count goes to three and one. Yes. That's right. The video did look like it might have been foul, but it doesn't matter what the video shows. And I still have that little score sheet, no sheet of mine. <laughs> Here's the 3-1. That's low, and Humbles is on with a walk. Jacob Greco. They could have made it a little harder on Humbles there, but I think that was their plan. Throw a first pitch strike and then pitch around him. Some of them got out of hand, though, but 
Here we are with the runner on first. The winning run on first, that is. There you go. First pitch to Greco, well high. Ball one. I have a weird feeling we won't see Humbles get caught stealing here. Now the Bowie coach coming out to the mound. What's going on out here? Well, this church has invited your jam in his own man too. We need a live rooster. Is it a live rooster? We need a live rooster to take the curse off Jose Flood, and nobody seems to know what to get Millie or Jimmy for their wedding present. Is that about right? I'll try. Well, uh, Camel Sticks always make a nice gift, and uh, you know, we can find out where she's registered, and we'll get place that in her in her silverware. Okay, let's get to it. Here we go. So the Bowie coach comes out to talk to Caber, brings in the whole infield. Quick little conference there. Greco steps back into the box with a 1-0 count, humbles the runner on first, two outs, bottom of the eighth. Two to two is the score. Here's the pitch, it's high over the head of Greco. The count goes to two and oh. I bet he said it for 11 or something. It was the week after that, and Kano did say I've said it for like 10.30 or 11. So they probably did do something, because we're at 9.27 now. There's a throw. It goes off to the Humble's better wall. than the third. Humble's better. Why is Humble's not at third base right now? Well, I think he didn't want to get tagged out. Now they may say, hey, can't he go to third? But if he went on his own, I think they would have tagged him out. Kind of doing a great job of hiding, hiding frustration. I know is present. But no, now, go ahead. So whenever you're running, hip to hip to the with the first baseman for three steps, umpire's never going to miss obstruction there. Yeah, it was a clear case. It looked like two and zero to Greco, high three and zero. Caber on the mound looks like he may have lost some control already here. Because the moral of that situation is the worst thing that can happen is you're safe at second. Here's the 3-0. It's inside. Almost hits him. <laughs> Number 24, Cooper Bernard. Runners at first and second, two outs. Pitch is high and outside for ball five, I mean ball one. <laughs> this pitcher's probably grateful he's not at Bluebell Park even though no. the Viking dugout's trying to do their best impression <laughs> of section 12, 112. That ball. pitch missed for ball six. <laughs> ball seven is getting chanted from the dugout currently. Good. Shortstop comes in to talk to Caber on the mound. Try to reassure him of something, I guess. And again, I don't know why they don't do that every pitch with no limit on defensive conferences. Just to make that batter wait. Yeah. Now, not our batter, of course. Right. Two balls, no strikes. Outside for ball three. Looks like you're setting up to catch the walk off, right? Just in case I like it. Thank you for doing that. Three balls and no strikes. Cooper Barnard. Will they load the bases here? He shows bunt. Pitcher steps off, turns around. No. Oh, That's a bulk, yeah. Both runners advance, but go ahead, Dave. What? You can tell me off. Now the umpire, I mean, the coach is coming out to talk to him. The field umpire calls balk. What did you see, Dave, that you think that's apparently it's, it's not a balk? He no stepped off and turned around. Balk. Okay, he stepped so off. It wasn't a step off. It was oh. a – he picked his knee up like his pitching motion, and he put it straight down behind the mound. Under no circumstances should that be a balk. But we are very thankful for it as that puts the winning run to third base for us. It does open up the spot. I anticipate they would intentionally walk him here. Uh, yeah. 
Because, yeah, because a pass ball, anything like that is going to score. So now, and we'll go ahead and put that down as an intentional walk because they don't throw the pitch. That'll load the bases. Colton Casada. Hey, that's textbook. Oh, and you had it on video, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Trying to get that walk off, but you should. You want to send that to the umpire? First pitch to Casada outside. Ball nine. If Casada swings at this pitch, I will give someone a lot of money. I have a feeling whenever Kino called them over. He said, you're not swinging until they yeah. strike on you. At least one. <laughs> that one's low in the dirt, blocked well by the catcher. Now two balls and no strikes. Kino calls Casada over. That is a strike. So now he's out of the, what, 10 balls in a row, I think, at least. Maybe even, well, thir what, 11 going back to Humbles. Two balls, one strike. Here's a pitch. That's outside. Three, one, the count now. High or fly ball to deep center field. The center fielder seems to have it tracked down. He makes the catch for the third out. The bases are left loaded. We'll go to the ninth. It's two to two. We'll be back. Off in the top of the ninth inning, number 15, Jason Wheeler. All right, Jason Wheeler is going to lead off here in the top of the ninth for Bowie. Shryock steps off. Got a single back in the sixth inning. Hank Austin, the catcher, now calls timeout. He's going to go talk to Ben Shryock, the pitcher. 
Oh, he's actually asking him to adjust a strap or something, it looks like. Or what? Are you saying he can't hear? One of the Bowie coaches comes over to talk to the batter. Looks like Hank Austin trying to tell the coaches he can't hear anything in his earpiece or whatever. Shryock now ready for the first pitch. Foul ball over to or toward the Viking dugout. No balls and one strike. Now Coach Goodman coming over to talk to Hank Austin. Yeah, he's trying to check and see if the wire is screwed up, uh, I guess, on the back of his catcher's gear, the chest protector. One of the Bowie fans not happy at all about the delay. <laughs> Yelling out, go old school, just play the ball game. But I'm sure they would feel the same or whatever if it was their catcher. So one ball and no strikes. Excuse me, no balls and one strike. I think I said that backwards. No one corrected me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's the 0 1 pitch. Outside, ball one. I almost said ball two. <laughs> one ball and one strike. Finally, here comes the 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside, maybe high, ball two. Two balls and one strike. Now waiting for the 2-1. Line drive into straightaway center field. That'll be a leadoff single. Jason Wheeler. Number 12, Roberto De Leon. De Leon comes up to the plate. He struck out swinging back in the six. Struck out swinging in the second. He shows bunt, tries to bunt, misses it. And the count goes to no balls and one strike. And same thing as the last time he tried to bunt his previous at bat. He should be glad because his whole foot is out of the box. If he makes contact with the ball, he's out. Okay, because he made contact out of the batter's box, right? Pitch is high and inside for ball one. Is that a message from the uh, pitcher? <laughs> or is that just, that's where the pitch ended up? I think that's where the pitch ended up. Okay. Might serve another purpose, though. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. He shows bunt, pushes it straight to the pitcher. Shryop picks it up, throws the sec I mean, the first in plenty of time. Runner advances. Batter's number 16, Andrew Vega. So Andrew Vega makes his first plate appearance in tonight's game. Kind of an excuse me swing goes into the Visitor bullpen, dollar hot dogs, $2 burgers at the concession stand. Get them hot, get them fresh, get them while they last. So here we are with the freshman up for bat for the volunteers. Only one at bat on the season coming into this game. Talk about a big time opportunity. With that runner in scoring position. No. Now they're gonna call no. the same thing. 
That's the same thing exactly, isn't it, that they missed earlier on the balk call. Now the coaches are going to come out for Lamar and go, wait a minute, you need some lessons. Now the Bowie fans who were upset when it was called on them love it when it happens to Lamar. Kino goes out and says to the field umpire, you need to go talk to your home plate umpire. The whole infield comes into the pitcher's mound. And I believe if the field umpire asks for it, the home plate has the power to overturn it only if he asks for it. And he does not overturn it. Kino's upset. Kino is emulating the leg kick and the motion. And I've never seen Kino get thrown out of a game. This could be the first time. And it'd be deserved. Now he's going out to talk to the field umpire. And, and the, the fans for Bowie are saying, well, y'all didn't like it when it, or y'all liked it when it happened to us. But I think Kino's the kind of guy, he wants it called right no matter who it is. And he's definitely going to stand up for it now. Their coach didn't put up much of a fuss when it happened to them. That's not our deal. But I truly think the field umpire needs some lessons. I think American Optical is calling. <laughs> well, that's not even just maybe, but it may just not be knowing or may not be knowing the rules. Or maybe a matter of not knowing the rules. Sorry, I got a little tongue tied. But either way. Here we are with that <laughs> infield in, freshman at bat. Runner at third now. Duque has gotten warm again. Don't know what that's gonna do for us depending on Damage may already be done by the time he get in, if something were to happen. It's been about two or three innings since he last warmed up. The 0-1 pitch shows bunt. Pushes it, foul! The runner comes across, but he's gotta go back. And the suicide squeeze does not work there. About 18 inches foul, first baseman waits for it perfectly. And uh, Hank Austin just got told from the the coach said, hey, if you're going to throw it, we need it at his face. Don't let him bunt it down whatsoever. And the best thing that could happen here is a strike three on a suicide squeeze attempt, and we tag the runner out. Now, was the home plate umpire saying something to the buoy coach off third? Because he walked that direction. Now it's no balls and two strikes. One out. And there the batter goes. He tugs the bill of his helmet don't know if that's he got the sign or if he says he's ready there it is he got oh, the two sign. shows bunt pushes it down the first pace line the runner gets under the tag oh. now a lot of players coming out to celebrate and i don't think that's really allowed it wasn't a home run it's not a walk off a lot of times they'll be told get back in there umpires are letting them go So the batter reaches on a fielder's choice there. We got away with it on the pitch before when he fouled it off. Goodman said, you have to throw it high. We emphasized it, and then there, it still doesn't happen. Scoring was number 15, Jason Wheeler. The next batter is number five, Jackson Turner. Oh, yeah, see. If let me know if you get his number. Two. Okay. Courtesy runner, first base number two, Isaiah Piper. There may actually be a pinch runner. Overall leadoff batter now up for Bowie. One out, runner at first. They have a three to two lead now after that successful bunt. Throws over to first. And the first base coach has no, uh, has no right to be upset about that. His guy got caught flat-footed. That's a really good pick move there. Now the first pitch to Jackson Turner of the at-bat. Hits the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Well, at least that takes the base runner off and puts it at two outs now. 
And that was a bold strategy, putting in a guy to run that's only been on the bases three times this year. And the lack of experience for the sophomore shows there. Definitely. Thanks for looking up those stats and everything, Dave. Kind of makes it a little more meaningful what happened. Ground ball sharply hit off the glove of Colton Casada. I think that goes down as a single. And now they've got a base runner again. Number four, Josh Kaber. I don't know that I've heard a more boisterous, boisterous, whichever the word is, buoy crowd. As, I mean, hey, I'm going to say this. I'm glad to see they have a good showing. They don't always. And they're into the game. Of course they would be. It's extra innings. They have the lead now. This would be a huge win for them. So here's where you have to stop the damage. Coach is going to call it a lack of focus. It's probably just a lack of execution whenever we can't get the pitch down. We get the, they get the suicide squeeze. And then we make up for it with the pickoff. And then we come back with not bottling up a hard hit ball. Pitch is outside for ball one. One ball and no strikes. Well, that pitch just missed high for ball two. No one warming up in the Viking bullpen right now. Coach Goodman, though, the pitching coach coming out to the mound, taking a fairly slow, deliberate walk. That'll allow Kaber, the batter, to go over and talk to his coach. Oh, yeah, in center field. Umpire's going to come over to break up the conference, and I think Goodman saw him out of the corner of his eye, so he breaks it up before the umpire gets there. The entire infield came into the mound. Everyone goes back out to their positions. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs. Runner at first. Bowie leads three to two in the top of the ninth. Caber, the batter. Grounded out to the second baseman in the seventh. Three balls and no strikes. He flew out to left field in the fifth. Flew out to the second baseman in the third. There's ball four. Two number four. Now runners at first and second. There, Hank Austin holds the ball uh, where he caught it for a long time. Doesn't change the call though. Number nine, Isaiah Henderson. Number one. one. Running at first base, number one, Bryson Peltier. Walking. Walking. Intentional walk issued to number nine. Isaiah Henderson. Number 11, Christian Uribe next to bat. A lot of things happened right there in just kind of one moment or two. Pinch runner comes in, intentional walk issue to load the bases, to put the out anywhere. The first pitch to Uribe, curveball down the middle, no balls and one strike. Two outs. Runner at third, not being held at all. The 0-1, started the swing, pulled back, but it caught the inside edge of the plate. And now the count goes to no balls and two strikes. The umpire telling the batter, get back in the box. We're not major league. You don't get to pop out anytime you want to. Or at least not major league five years ago. True that, yeah. Here comes the 0-2. High above his head. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. 
Yeah, Hank Austin reached up and, and grabbed that one. That's a good point, Andy. The Bowie fans making some noise, stomping their feet on the metal stands. I don't blame them. I'd be doing the same thing. The one-two pitch. It's a bouncing ball back to the pitcher. Throws over to first. Oh, a little bit short almost. Ravel picks it up or catches it for out number three. The bleeding stops at one run. The Vikings have to get at least one in the bottom of the ninth. We'll be back. All right, back live here in action. Bottom of the ninth inning. Now the Vikings trail three to two. Cooper Schutte leading off. First pitch, foul back behind us. No balls and one strike. Dave, what did you just catch there, a final tonight? Yeah, so scores from around the district. Um, SGP beat Salton five to two. And then Martin beat Arlington roughly four to one. Pitch is high for ball one. Go ahead. Which means that SGP and Martin now are at 10 wins. Arlington High at nine. We're at eight, not including this game. Okay. One ball, one strike. Swings on it. Fouls it over to the practice fields. Count goes to one ball and two strikes. Can almost sense the desperation feel for the Vikings here. This is playoff type baseball because you're playing for a spot. Ground ball, it's it goes short. through. Shooty will be on first base with a leadoff single. Leadoff single for Cooper Shooty now batting Devin Ravel. So our runner in first has a self-reported 6.47 second 60. <laughs> self-reported. I don't Shows have bunt. Drops a nice bunt. Sacrifice bunt. Advances Shooty to second base in scoring position. Number 11, Hank Austin. So Hank Austin comes up to the plate with a man in scoring position and only one out. He's due. First pitch is outside for ball one. But regardless of the exact number, that's our fastest, one of our fastest guys on second base. And it is. Position to tie it. Cooper. Uh, yeah. Cooper Shooty is. He is the fastest. Yeah. Two balls and no strikes to Hank Austin now. The number nine hitter. Oh, that pitch hung just high. That would be a tough one to watch sometimes. 
in my book. Be a lot tougher to watch if Kiner didn't tell you, hey, you're not swinging the pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, the 3 0. What you'd expect, it's in there. And I have a feeling here, Bowie's just scared out of their mind for a pickoff attempt. They know they want to. The second baseman's there. But if you airmail it, that pitch is low, and that's a walk. Cage Shryock. Number 10. Courtesy runner at first base, Cole Rents. And yeah, the airmail air is always in play, but I was thinking more so on the balk call. Oh, 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 yeah, I got you now. We've seen two legal balks called illegal, one for each team. First pitch to Shryock inside for ball one. I'm thinking you don't swing the bat till you see a called strike, right? I mean, why would you? Right. The 1-0 inside for ball two. Can you hear what they're saying? There's a strike call, two balls and one strike. I couldn't hear what they're Could calling. Could have been a ball seven call, but oh. sure. Could be. Two and one. Shryock, it's high. Ball three, three and one. The red light should be on, right? I mean. Oh, wait, no, not with one strike. The red light, you don't want him, you want him to swing? High fly ball. Center field is caught. Now there's two outs. Wait, who's batting? Colton McKay. Number eight, Colton McKay. Wait, can we re-enter players? Mm-hmm, oh. on certain positions. He's not a pitcher catcher. But he hadn't. He got pinch hit for last time, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. I thought Trey Keys came in here. I forgot about the re-entry rules, I guess. First pitch was a foul ball, no balls and one strike. McKay is due tonight. Fouls that one, no balls and two strikes. No balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Here's the pitch, high for ball one. Temporarily quiets the buoy crowd. Now one ball and two strikes. Pitches outside for ball two, it evens up the count. Two and two. And it's about a foot outside, you know, Colton's just yeah. hoping it doesn't get rung up. Right. Him. He's been rung up twice tonight. That's uh, the big hope for him. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. Here's the pitch. High for ball three. The count goes full. Man, I'm shaking. And I'm, I'm just, <laughs> there's a lot of nervous tension here. Here's the payoff pitch. Walked him. Number one, Jalen Humbles. And there I did see Kino um, do a little hitting gesture. So this might be the first time we see a, a swing before a, a called strike. 
Every other batter has been given the take till you see a strike sign. I'd like to see a pass ball. He did swing at the first pitch, fouls it away. A little bit up in the higher part of the strike zone possibly, if not out of it. Fouls it off, no balls and one strike. Bases loaded, two outs, bottom of the ninth. Here's the 0-1, it's high, ball one, evens up the count at one and one. Who's more nervous, that pitcher not wanting to walk in the winning or the tying run or humbles at bat? Not wanting to be the third out. That pitch is well outside the strike zone. The count goes to three and one. Now the Viking crowd making some noise. Here's the pitch. It's upstairs. Three and one. Shortstop comes in to talk to the pitcher. Humbles goes over to talk to Kaino. Humbles has the message. He's shaking his head very affirmatively. I have a feeling the message was. Don't swing. Have fun, kid. Oh. That's my, that's. Okay. I'm betting a lot of money. He said, hey, have fun, kid. Okay. I like it. Three balls, one strike. The pitch. Just outside, that walks in the tying run. <laughs> Scoring for the Vikings, Cooper Shooty. The next Viking to the plate, Jacob Greco. That pitch misses, it's ball one. The Greco chants are getting louder from the dugout. High fly ball. It's gonna fall just foul. Bases loaded for Greco. He's kind of due. The 1-1 one, one pitch. It misses. Two balls and one strike. Kaino applauds Greco for being patient there in the box. What a game we are experiencing. Here comes the 2-1 pitch. High fly ball. Looks to be playable by the shortstop who is calling for it. He makes it, but the Vikings tie it up. We're going to go into the 10th inning. It's two to, excuse me, three to three. We'll be back.
So we enter into the top of the tenth here. Leadoff hitter of the inning is Ortega. He fouls off the second pitch. Make it a one-to-one -one count. Swing and miss there, four strike two. Brings the count to one and two. Wind up. That one's gonna miss outside. Again, a curveball. We hope it's a little more competitive than that. But one, two count, don't wanna give up anything. Swing and a miss. Now batting number 13, Jesus Villarreal. One out, nobody on here in the top of the 10th. Shows bunt, pulls back. Ball one. Really good crowd for both teams and they're all staying around to see how this one plays out. Shows bunt, pulls back, it's high. Ball two. And the home plate umpire is asking for an appeal. This first base umpire is in his own world. He didn't even see the and request. And the home plate umpire gave up on it, which I don't know if that's legal. I'd almost have to say, obviously, he didn't even see the pitch or the sw potential swing, the field umpire. Because you put it pretty well, he was in his own world. Two balls and one strike to count. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to the third baseman. Casada picks it up. One hops it, can't make the play. Is that an error on the third baseman, I think, because he threw it too low? You're not expecting Ravel to make that, are you? That is not ordinary effort. Yeah. So that will go down as an E5. Number 15, Jason Wheeler. Just as I was getting ready to uh, plot our infield for knowing how much time they have and getting the ball there in time without rushing it, we see the second or third ball in the dirt across the infield. Pitch misses, ball one. One ball and no strikes. Andy, how many pitches does Shryock have? Next one will be 71. 71. Not a big lead for the runner at first. That pitch is high, ball two, two balls and no strikes. Nobody warming up in the Viking bullpen. Here, I'm gonna be surprised if we don't see the bunt attempt again. Mm -hmm. If it's a 2-0 count, yeah. that means the pitcher really wants to throw something over the plate. And a last second, oh. But it's outside. Ball three. And he does have the take sign, so. Hope we can fire this one. Okay, yeah, Duque now warming up in the Viking bullpen. That pitch almost hits him. Wheeler reaches with a walk.
There's one out. And I'm well aware of the umpire shortage, but here's another just thing you can't do as an umpire. He called time before the batter stepped on first base after a walk. Oh, wow. And that's just simply inexcusable. I hadn't even noticed that, Dave. I'm glad you saw that. But, yeah, was it the field umpire or the home plate? Home plate umpire. So both of them have been kind of questionable on some knowing the rules or knowing the procedures, yeah. More than the lost and found the glasses. <laughs> Number 12, Roberto De Leon. De Leon comes up. He had a sacrifice bunt back in the ninth. No ball call on the sure. exact same move. Shryhawk steps off. Yeah, maybe they had some conferencing during the mid inning at some point. De Leon struck out swinging in the second. Ball one there. He reached on an error in the fifth. Struck out swing in the sixth. Had that sacrifice bunt in the ninth. And here he is in the top of the tenth. Time called again. Again, like we said before, no penalty unless you go talk to the coach on either side, offense or defense. Here's the 1-0 pitch, shows bump, pulls back. It's outside for ball two. And at some point, we've got to take the outs they're giving us when they show bunt. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Far better than falling behind 2-0. Getting into a hitter's count. Here's the pitch. He does bump this one down the first baseline. Underhand throw from Shryock to Ravel. So he has another sacrifice bunt. Now there's two outs. But runners at second and third. Number 16, Andrew Vega. So two men in scoring position, but the two outs. Vega reached on a fielder's choice back in the ninth. That's when they tried to throw out the guy at home, I believe. Now that was too early in that. Vega was the courtesy or pinch runner that got picked off, I believe. Actually, Maybe not. no, he, he actually batted in the ninth. I have him down as a fielder's choice. High fly ball that goes foul back over toward the stands. Just out of reach of one of the fans. Oh, did he have the suicide squeeze? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that curveball just missed. Two balls and one strike. Is it 2-1, is that right? A oh, one and one, my bad, I'm sorry. Now it's one and two, called strike two. One ball and two strikes. Two on, both in scoring position. Two outs. Top of the 10th, three to three. Here comes the one, two. It's on the outside edge. Well, there's a big bullet dodge there. <laughs> Dave, you're not sure about that call? Hank Austin does his job well uh, on that pitch. Okay. <laughs> That's all you want to say about that. In the top of the 10th inning, no runs, no hits, two left on base. It's three to three.
Okay, going into the bottom of the 10th inning. Barnard to lead off, first pitch, strike one. Oh. What, oh. So kind of says one more. Kind of says one more, meaning he has to take until he sees another strike. That pitch is outside for ball one. I know Barnard's not happy about that, but <laughs> it probably works out in the Vikings' favor, adding to the pitch count. See what happens with the younger pitcher on the mound. True, yeah. That's not just seeing if you get walked or whatever, but it digs into the pitch count more. Bernard hasn't been hit by a pitch in a while. Two balls and one strike. On the outside edge, two balls and two strikes. The 2-2, two -two, it's outside, the count goes full. Waiting for the payoff pitch. Here it comes. Swing and a miss for strike three. Colton Casada. All right, Colton Casada comes up to the plate. One out, nobody on. He's the number six batter overall. Where's number six? Here's his first pitch. High fly ball that's going to be into medium or shallow left field. The shortstop gets on the grass and catches that one. F6 to get number six. Cooper Shooty. Shooty comes up to the plate with two outs and nobody on. Here's his first pitch. High for ball one. Struck out looking back in the seventh. Struck out swinging in the fourth. How did he get on last time? I'm looking to see. Ball two. He's not, oh, he got a walk in the second. The 2-0, swing and a miss. Strike one. Oh, he got on with a single in the ninth. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Looking further back. Fouls that one off, it goes to two and two. He scored that run to tie it up in the ninth. Thank you for pointing out my notes there, Dave. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Trying to stay alive here at the plate. Swing and a miss for strike three. That'll end the inning, three up, three down. We'll go into the 11th, we'll be back.
Leading off in the top of the 11th, number five, Jackson Turner. So Bowie has their overall leadoff batter up here to lead off in the 11th, number five, Jackson Turner. Pretty soon we're gonna see how far away that timer was set on the lights. That's true because it's 10:23, probably 11. I'm gonna guess, but pitches low, ball one. The next pitch, ground ball. Humbles will pick it up. It short bobbles it. Can't recover in time. That'll go down as an E6. Number four, Josh Kaber. Game changer gave him the single there, and I just mm, I don't think so. Not too sure about that one. Now he bobbled it, and that was just not a. He had the chance. Another time called. <laughs> My big problem with that is it's before the first pitch is thrown. I don't yeah. know what you have to get ready for when they give you an on deck circle. Shows bunt pulls back, ball one high. Hank Austin throws to first. The runner gets back in plenty of time. Yeah, that's a generous scoring on uh, Game Changer, I believe. You know, I think they ought to hire. They used to do this back in the old days of the scorebooks. Shows or puts down a bunt right back to the pitcher. Yeah. So on the sacrifice bunt, runner advances to th uh, second. Now they're going to issue an intentional walk to number nine to maintain the force. Number 11, Christian Uribe. So another intentional walk in extra innings uh, for number nine. This time makes a little bit more sense because there's an open bag. Last time they just pushed everyone up to make the bases loaded. Yeah. Pitch in the dirt, count goes to two and oh. Is it two and oh? No, it's uh, Oh, just one. You just clear count and That'll be the easiest way than one, yeah. So one ball and no strikes. There we go. Surprise that's your first error at the scoreboard, Andy. We've been at this for a long time. Line drive, it goes into right field. Runner comes around third. He's going home. What? There was a cut, or Devin Rovell went to cut the ball and blocks it off to the side preventing the ball from having a chance to go home. And so now the volunteers get the lead run again. Scoring number five, Jackson Turner. Well, that's too bad. Number seven, Roman Ortega. And it seems like the catcher might have actually called for the cut there. Not that it was the correct call, but right. it looks like he did call for it because there was, seemed pretty, uh, like a mutual understanding of what happened between everyone. Okay. And then the first and third play is on. I don't have the signs, don't know what it is. But there's another <laughs> timeout before, before the first, the first pitch. <laughs> yeah. I do see the runner doesn't have a sliding mitt on, but I can't imagine that's what's going on. Kind of jammed him inside. Fly ball is caught by the left fielder. There's a throw to home. 
Hank Austin completely misses the ball and now the runner goes from first to second. Scoring is number nine, Henderson. The throw did go behind the runner, so not on Austin, but we need the pitcher there to back him up. Yeah. Number 13, Brody Ferguson. Excuse me, excuse me, number 13, Jesus Villarreal. Two, two outs, yeah. Sacrifice Brunt and then that fly ball. Runner at second, two outs. Oh my gosh, the umpire calls time right when he's throwing the ball. I will say that one, he called it on time, but again, there's no need for it. Yeah. He hadn't been in the box that long. So there he showed the slider is slider curveball. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Comes up with a high fastball for strike one, nice. No balls and one strike. Two outs, runner at second. Bowie now leads five to three. They've picked up two here in the top of the 11th. I think they have it figured out on the ball call because there we get another uh, inside move not called. Ground ball, Humbles picks it up, makes a big throw, but offline. I think that's a base hit though, that one. Number 15, Jason Wheeler. The sad thing is that I think our only play is to fake the throw to first and see if we can get the runner out third if he rounds Trying to it. Round, yeah, yeah, because there was just not much time there to. He did handle it cleanly though with that big hop, so which was tough. First pitch to Wheeler, strike one. Small lead at first and an unconvincing jab step. I'm not sure what his objective is there. The runner at first. The 0 1 pitch. Swung on a miss, strike two. The 0 2 misses. It goes to 1 and 2. Shakes off twice. Shakes off a third time. <laughs> Here comes the one two. Hank really wanted that call. He was ready to throw over to third. Evens up the count at two balls and two strikes. The Ballerina 2-2 pitch on its way. Hank tried to frame that one with a big move. The count goes full. If he walks this guy, it loads the bases. Doesn't bring anyone in. Sure would like to get that third out though. Full count. Payoff pitch on its way, ball four. Hank doesn't like that, but that's about the same as they've been calling him. And I see Duque taking off his hoodie in the bullpen. He's climbing over the fence. <laughs> Didn't use the gate, huh?
And with 94 pitches, that'll do it for Shyock. Wow, 94, and he was relief. Numero 23, Jacob Duque. We are back. Jacob Duque, number 23, comes in to pitch for the Vikings. Inherits the bases loaded. Two outs, though. Lots of ways to get out number three here. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Other than you and Charlie, Duque is one of my favorite players of all times at the Lamar Viking Diamond. The 0-1, curveball hits it high, center field. Cooper Barnard has it played, and that's out number three. But Bowie picks up two runs before they leave the bases loaded. We'll be back. Leading off in the bottom of the 11th inning for the Vikings, Devin Ravel. All 
All right, Devin Rovell steps up to lead off here in the bottom of the 11th. First pitch misses for ball one. Had the sacrifice bunt back in the ninth. Struck out looking in the fourth. Struck out swinging in the second. He's due. Pretty much all of them are due for a hit. Straight down the middle for strike one. One ball and one strike. That pitch is well high. Two balls and one strike. Hank Austin on deck. The number nine hitter to follow Devin Ravel here. Oh, line drive just past the glove of the pitcher. Ravel gets a leadoff single. Leadoff single for Ravel. The next batter, Hank Austin. That leadoff single from Devin Rovell sure helps. The number nine hitter, Hank Austin, coming up to the plate now. First pitch to him misses for ball one. He's due for a hit. Pitch is just high for ball two. Trying to see when his last hit was in this game. Well, he walked in the ninth. Struck out swinging in the fifth. Struck out swinging in the second. And now he's got a 3-0 count. He kind of just holds up three fingers as he looks over <laughs> at the batter. Yeah. And that's ball four. And here we go. It's, it's the ball for sure. Pitcher requests the new ball and a four pitch walk. Well, I won't back down. No, I won't back Cage Triarch. Shryock comes to the plate. Hank Austin has time to tie his shoes as the runner at first. Puts on his sliding mitt. That pitch is high for ball one. Ball five if you're counting back to Hank. Runners at first and second. There's ball six. Nobody out. The Vikings have a chance to blow it up. There's strike one. Ooh, swing and a miss at a questionable pitch. Count evens up at two and two now. Hitting's hard enough, and it makes it even harder when you swing at the ones at your eyes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Swing and a miss for strike three. Colton McKay! Colton McKay steps up to the plate. He walked back in the ninth. First pitch to him is strike one. It always gets a little easier whenever you're batting when you've already been on base once before. Yeah, especially after three strikeouts and two of those looking. You're one, up high, ball one. One ball and one strike. You're not yawning, are you, Dave? <laughs> no. <laughs> The one one, swing and a miss, strike two.
The one, two. Tips it foul into the mitt for a strikeout. We get the first two on. Jalen Humbles. Man, if there was ever a time for a big hit, it is now from Jalen Humbles. No pressure, but two on, two outs. Bottom of the 11th, trailing by two. Swings, misses, strike one. The 0 1 fouls it back away behind the home dugout. Count goes to 0 and 2 with two outs and two on, trailing by two. And here, any batter, whoever it is, has got to be able to eat his pride and swing at a pitch even if he knows it's not over the plate. Just to at least foul it. To go down looking. High fly ball. It's going to blow into foul territory, it looks like. But the first baseman makes the catch. That'll go down as an F3. The Volunteers are going to win this one. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, Dave, hard fought game, big win for Bowie, tough loss for the Vikings. We split with Bowie, but when you go 11 innings, at least it's Friday night, I'll have to say that. Makes it a lot easier when you don't have to go to class in the morning. True, and they don't have a Saturday game. We had that 11 inning marathon against Martin and they had a Saturday game out in um, Roy City, I believe, the next day. So yeah, the chance to kind of sleep in and recover from this. Unfortunately, Bowie does come out on top, unfortunately for the Vikings, I'll say. Just kind of mix up their playoff picture a little bit. So yeah, the standings that will take a sweep against SGP and maybe some help to get out of the four seed for the playoffs. Okay. Well, we'll see how that plays out. Dave, I sure appreciate you coming into town for this. I know you made a special trip from Springdale, Arkansas and, uh, and sure enjoy doing this with you. Hopefully we get to do it again sometime in the future. Any last thoughts? No, nope, that's it from that's it for me. Just thank you, and it was great to come down. Awesome. Well, for our executive producer Jay Ryan and our statistician, scorekeeper, pitch count man, spotter, probably ran the water jug, Andy Wheeler, and for my color commentary and son partner here, David Frawley. I'm Bill Frawley, saying VFND.